while everyone's kind of coming in here, um, I want to let you guys know that there is something called the black box that you can submit to. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll grab that link again here in a minute. But basically, the the black box is a questionnaire for your character. And you can uh, essentially, essentially you're answering like what happens if your character runs into a duck. Like it's it's a very innocent situation that unfolds pretty quickly. So just know that it's not like something you can do super fast. Like you kind of need to like answer the questionnaire properly in order for you to participate. I can tell when you guys kind of speed run <laughs> the responses. Uh, but I I really I really do like doing this because it means that um, I get an idea of what your character's kind of goals are. You know, it's it may sound mundane, uh, but it's designed to be uh, and then evolve from there. Um, you know, potentially see your AI generated mid journey characters inside of our stream today. Um, most likely, uh, you know, like because there's already 33 submissions in there, you know, there's a there's a chance that we might not get to your character this stream. But I will be doing this stream every Friday at four. So you're welcome to come back, check in, see how we're doing. And if you do miss the streams by any chance, I do have a YouTube that I upload everything to. So um, you're welcome to check that out after today's stream or whenever you want, really. But yeah, OK. All right. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is <laughs> we are going to first actually take a look at uh, some of the black box submissions, as well as uh, any sort of questions you guys might have right off the bat, um, because I, I I might <laughs> I might go through things a little faster than you, what you're expecting, right? So um, feel free to tell me to slow down inside of VC text or anything like that, especially when we start getting into like character and art injection and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is open up my drive again here and we're gonna just kind of look through some of these characters here but um at least at least for me whenever i'm going through this stuff my instinct has to be to not pick anime characters at first because anime is just super easy to do in mid journey um for, you know with using niji and all that stuff so we're gonna try to do some um some non-niji stuff today uh i think that that's a good way to get everyone um, sort of excited to see like the potential of this because we can even do like live action stuff, you know. So let me open up this browser tab here. Uh, actually, I'll do this one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this this is the you know like just the, basically the master collection of all the submissions that we've gotten so far. Um, and you know some of these like uh, Keen's here, my Keen here. We, you know, this is a hand-drawn one where we used it to create a like almost like Pixar style version of his hand-drawn character. Uh, so if you want to see converting hand-drawn to, um, you know, what what I'm calling latently compatible characters, as in they're they're easily generated or you know repeatable, uh, you can check out one of the previous streams for that. But um, we have a bunch of different uh, variety of characters, including some pretty like you know derivative stuff like the DBZ character there and all that. And 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 frankly, I think that this might be the stream where we finally crack open the furries uh, and we uh, we try to make a couple of um, a couple of these because uh, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say the cat boy doesn't count. Uh, I need I need a proper um, <laughs> I need a proper animal head to be uh, to be considered a furry. So. Um, you know, I, I personally gravitate towards this one, um, uh, from, um, Boozlegast, I guess. Um, Boozlegast, yeah. Um, I might clean up a few things about this because like, you know, the, the flower in the middle might become weird in terms of, um, some of it's like, you know, what, what it might generate. Cause it, the, the thing is, is that a lot of this is going to rely on the fact that there's other image, you know, images or just basically training inside of Midjourney that is similar, right? So if your character is like hyper divergent and like, for example, a lot of like Western '90s animation is super off model, as in the characters always change, um, especially as they react and stuff. Midjourney will have more trouble replicating that as opposed to doing a more conformed character style. And usually, if the anatomy is pretty humanoid that's conformed enough in order to make this work. So 
I think we will add this to the list um, of characters to uh, to do today. So I'm going to leave that one open. And then um, the uh, we, we talked about the ro this robot character before, but I do want to mention it really quick. The reason why I didn't choose to do this one was specifically because of the scrap metal. The scrap metal is like, what scrap metal? Like, are we talking like industrial like components? Or are you talking like off the shelf parts? Like there's a lot of potential variety that comes from just using scrap metal as a prompt, right? So whenever I was trying to work with this character, uh, it ended up being that it would it would it would just pick random slabs of metal to be parts of the body, and it was a lot harder to make that compatible the way I wanted to. Um, but because uh, you know, like I don't want to go too heavy on the furry stuff, but we but I'll I'll also show how to pull a character out of a completed scene like this, um, because that will that will be pretty important if you want to get an idea of how at least how Mid Journey is going to uh, interpret the imagery that you're giving it. And then uh, for our anime character, I, I, I do like this one a lot uh, from uh, part turn one. Uh, this one could be fun because the silhouette in particular is very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a dress, yes, but you have this midriff like kind of cut off all the way up, which makes it more like a cape. So we might, we might experiment in that as well. Um, and in terms of more live action sort of stuff, we have a... Um, uh, uh, someone from, Gr I think her, her name is Grace, um, had submitted this one. And I really like this one. I think there's a lot of potential for, for this because it is, it, it's very easily replicable from all different angles and stuff because the character is so consistent. So uh, I'm going to leave these three open uh, for now. And I think that that's going to be the best way for us to... Um, to get started with this, but feel free to give your your comments and suggestions inside of the um, uh, VC text here. Uh, I see I got a tag. I need a proper animal head to be considered a furry. Yes, that is officially um, that that is that is the uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that's the official criteria of what makes a furry a furry is that if you have to put on like you know an animal head costume in order to become that character, then yes, yes, you're you're. You're a bona fide furry at that point. Um, I, I just just putting a tail at the back end of your pants isn't enough. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, but let's let's go ahead and I have these three here. It's interesting how there's like overlap on some of the characters. It really just comes down to what people prompt for. You know, uh, a lot of times if you just say long hair, it's gonna be like a blonde or a brunette woman, right? Uh, it, the long-haired men that I've seen from our character streams before are the most interesting to me because it's it suddenly gets into like all sorts of like history, you know, like Nordic history and all that sort of stuff too. So very cool. Um, but uh, let's that this is the third one I meant to open. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna start with um, with Boozle Gas here because I think this is the most fun um, to do. And I have Photoshop open here. You can use any image manipulator you like um to uh to do, hey it's you hey there is boozle gas hey and, and and you have your chaos code inside it that's that's great um that's it if you if you use chaos 42 just because the number 42 i i i respect you uh the, the, let me just put it that way um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna download this um i'm very curious what results you get i i can guarantee you that they are just chaos hey celeste how you doing um the, uh, I, in order to see gifts, I have to actually click the Discord here. Oh, look at the puppies go. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Um, so what I'm going to do first, actually, is I am going to just do some minor cleanup on this character um, inside of Photoshop here. You can use any image manipulator you want. Um, <laughs> nice, yeah. Uh, I love how you can just repeat the number twice and it makes no difference. You're literally just making more work for you, but that's fine. It's funny. Um, but, uh, what I use is Photoshop beta here. So what I'm going to do is just quickly generate away some of this stuff. Now, granted, I could do this in mid journey too, but I don't have access to the original prompt that they are, that you guys are submitting. Right. So, uh, I'm just going to do this really quick in, uh, Photoshop beta. So, uh, I rely a lot on image interrogation, no matter really which, um, service I use, except for mid journey, because mid journey really understands my intent 
because I'm, you know, it's where, where usually all my images are originating anyway. So um, doing simple stuff like this, like, oh, I just need to patch that. Image interrogation is amazing for that. So I don't write anything in the prompt. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, hey, look at this and try to make it look good, right? And you can notice I'm even missing a button that's here. So I'm just going to highlight around there and not even write anything again. Because if I write button, it's going to look like clip art. It's going to look like a, you know, <laughs> something that I uh, grabbed off the internet and slapped on there. Um, but there's a good chance uh, that, you know, it, and, and here's the funny thing about this. Like, I can keep cycling this, right? But uh, I, I'm just going to I'm just going to do this the right way and actually draw that little dot right there. Um, this is it's a uh, it's a bit silly to try to generate little simple um, things like this, but um, there we go. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, cool. So now that I have this, um, I am going to clean up the tie as well because I want the tie to be really recognizable as a bow tie, right? Right now it doesn't look like a bow tie because it has this weird underlayment like thing underneath it. Um, it, it doesn't understand the intent of what, of what, um, it just knows that there's a red blobby shape by the neck, I guess. Um, so what I'm going to do is just write bow tie in here. And again, you could do all this inside of mid journey now. Um, it's just the fact that I don't have access to the original prompt. So, um, if we, we probably need to write red bow tie now that I'm thinking about it, but, um, the, uh, the main thing is that, yeah, see, we got a, we got a, we got a fun tie right off the bat and it looks way closer to it, to what I would say a bow tie. I would expect a bow tie to look, Hey, look, there's a red one. Perfect. All right. We don't need to do anything. <laughs> um, and then I can look, and there's another red one there. So let's see. I, I like this one more. I think this one works. I'm very proud of this image because it because it's hard to get a tiger smoking. Oh yeah, I, to do the Joe Camel thing. Yeah, it's actually quite tough to do. Um, with in painting now, you can just highlight the area, hit smoking, right, and it works. Um, now now the the one thing I did, and I'll show this comic in a minute here, but I I actually just used the word meow. Uh, in order to make cats talk, um, that was that was the most fun that I've had uh, doing in painting here in a minute. But um, okay, so I have this here. There's a little bit of like kind of red scuff that's over here, just like part of the bow tie that doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna highlight over that and also, you know, get in, you know, see if it cleans up that automatically well. Uh, but I am so impressed when it comes to image interrogation nowadays. It's so powerful to be able to do this and not really have a lot of um, you know, uh, seeing those errors in your images anymore, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say this second one's good enough there. Cool. Um, there's a little bit of murkiness at the end of the um, at the end of the uh, uh, collar here. So I will also do that. But th these little details are super important because it's trying to interpret what's going on inside the image, you know? So at least for me, whenever I'm doing this kind of stuff, I really... I really want to take my time and make sure that every little detail is as I want it to be. Um, even if it doesn't end up replicating it perfectly, it just gives me a chance to be able to say, oh, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> that was mid journey's fault or whatever. So, um, but now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to outpaint a little more of the tiger here in order to get us a, a, a cleaner left arm here. And then I'll remove the background, which is the last step here. Because uh, whenever we're doing character continuity, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be creating a character sheet, and so I'm actually going to pull up what that looks like here real quick. Original characters. Um, we have a bunch from other people, including, uh, including some. Uh, Becky did a, uh, you know, like a, a tiger, uh, kind of humanoid, which was pretty cool to see, and so very much similar in the vein of what we're doing now. Uh, but inside of here, um, we also have some in-production stuff where we show like different characters and, and the different projects that they're in. And this one is my most popular, which is Sage. Um, and I'm going to open this up in a way that you guys can see a little better. Alrighty. So this is what we're going to end up making with the tiger here. We're going to make a character sheet. This character sheet's a little different than what you would see in traditional entertainment. Um, it is a turnaround, but instead of a concept sheet which has all sorts of like sketchiness to it and otherwise is um 
you know, only meant to like be an inspiration for the artists when they when they actually draw every frame for an animated show or whatever. This, on the other hand, is meant to be as clean as you want it to be. Uh, the better, the more hand drawn, the better, honestly. So if you have traditional art skills, they they are going to shine at this point because you need to make all those expressions as well. And we'll get into getting the tiger to have those expressions here in a minute. But the the key thing is, is that you see that I have two different perspectives of her. You only really need to, but you want as many like kind of references as possible. So it doesn't, you can have, you know, multiple poses. It's fine. My character here, Victor, actually has like seven or eight different poses uh, kind of baked in. And that's to make him more, uh, honestly, to make him more relaxed. Um, it's very often that the the flamboyantness of, the, of Victor's character by default was like a very like, like high energy. And I, I didn't see that for the character. So I, I reduced the turnarounds to, uh, or, or sorry, I increased the number of turnarounds until it gave a more straight up pose like this. Do you use the default list of emotions with character sheet? So um, the the emotions I bake in with the prompts, right? Like I'll say, hey, I want the character scared here. Or, hey, I want the character to react a certain way. But because my images, my image references are so powerful, like the image weight is so powerful, it'll actually reference your sheets when you describe those emotions. Because like, for example, um, like uh, here, let's just say I wanted to say like that she's laughing. Right. The thing about it is that that face, that, that that like mouth shape, right, is visible in one of my references, which means that it's more likely going to make that mouth shape sort of look like that because other faces that are laughing or whatever have that shape or at least are similar to that shape. So it more often times will reference onto that. And we'll show you guys what it looks like when we actually start injecting the characters back into props so that you can, you know, control them and stuff. But I really just want to emphasize that you need a clean sheet like this. You need it to be a white background with different emotions that range for the character that you believe the character is needing. So if your character is never going to cry in your, you know, in your series, then you probably don't need a, you know, super, you know, super sad pouty care, you know, face reaction for that. Um, you want to include the range that is going to be in the media that you're producing. So if you're always going to have like a like a badass sort of hero character that has no vulnerabilities and is otherwise very boring, <laughs> uh, then you're not you're not going to have any character expression sheets. You're just going to have one kind of like, you know, boring. <laughs> sheet. I'm trying to recreate what makes a bad character sheet, you know, or, or even a bad character. Honestly, if there's no range in your character, then it's not really worth doing, in my opinion. So um, that's what we want to make. And that's what we're going to do with the tiger here is we're going to try to recreate these turnarounds. And the thing is about this is that I need I need as much reference as I can out of this very first image because you can use any image that you generate from mid journey. There are just ones that are better than others. And it really just depends on um, how clear everything is, how uh, how little visual distortion there is like that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm just going to see just with image interrogation. Uh, again, in mid journey, you can just outpaint this. You can zoom out, you can um, pan left or whatever in order to try to recreate more of the body for your character. But um, you know, we'll we'll be able to get away a lot with just uh, Adobe, um, uh, you know, outpainting here. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna say, and you can see the horizon lines completely broken on on the bottom here. Uh, that horizon line is very common for AI imagery to have broken, um, broken horizons. How many different images do you normally include? I, I would say that I include anywhere from uh, three to 12. It really, it does it, it, it's, there's no hard number on that. It's just, just know that the more images you add, the less powerful those, Im like the latter end of those images end up being. Because everything in your prompt is listed from beginning to end. The beginning of your prompt is the most powerful part. The end of your prompt is usually the weakest part. Okay, cool. Uh, FYI, the max size Adobe Gen Fill will do is 1024 by 1024. When you try to fill an area larger than those dimensions, it generates at 1K and then upscales the pixels to fit the area. This upscaling can sometimes lead to somewhat blurry results. Thus, you should try to Gen Fill in 1024 blocks. Yes, yes. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, 
you know, uh, human. I really do. And I, I, I know that, um, you know, you do the Adobe stuff here and I really, you, you're the expert when it comes to, uh, watching me kind of, you know, uh, do, do some stumble and stuff with image interrogation probably is a little, uh, he's been teaching me how to do it. To right. Do right. Adobe. That's awesome. Um, but the, the key thing is, and I guess this is the part that I want to emphasize with this is that I use Adobe gen fill for specifically small details. Normally, this is a pretty exaggerated use case of it, you know, um, at least for me, I'm oftentimes using it just simply to, um, to make like, uh, very um what is it very minor corrections like just to remove things um so like for example i just wanted people to realize don't try to do 3000 pixels tall yeah 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 no it's uh it it'll definitely give you worse results i i fully fully not only agree with that it's uh it is certainly true but um i, I do want to show like something that we can kind of so like for example if say like the halo effect the pink effect didn't really work out the way i liked or just is it really cropping correctly when I get a white background, what I can do is I can actually just highlight, select the pink part of it, like just kind of marquee around it. And then we might even get a more realistic fur out of it too. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm definitely going to be upscaling a little bit on the result here, but I really like it for fixing particularly like uh, rough edges, like pixel edges and stuff. It's amazing for that. Absolutely amazing for that. So um, I'm just going to be pretty generous with my selection here to make sure I grab as much of the pink as possible. And we can see if we can get away with um, just demonstrating um, how to get a nice clean outline uh, with, with Gen Fill here. Um, so let's see here. Bam. Get rid of this a little bit. There we go. And I I'm going to run it without writing anything. I'm just going to see what it does. Uh, we shouldn't have much of any of the pink um, left just because there's not a lot, a lot indicating that there's going to be like a pink halo around the character after I highlighted all this. So I am anticipating. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It just just straight up removed it. Perfect. Um, and we can kind of pick our options here in terms of um, which one has a bit of the cleaner like result here. So um, you can see that upscaling is pretty much in effect, though, because it, it blurs a little bit of the edges here. Uh, and it's just kind of a bit murkier, murkier. Um, I think this one actually probably has the cleaner result though. So, um, just, just to get us started here. Oh, Hey, I found the original job. Maybe you can just grand these in. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, no, that's perfect. That's actually exactly what I wanted. Uh, that, that, that's amazing. Um, okay. So, uh, this, this will make this a lot easier now because then I don't have to recreate most of the other character and we're working all within the machine mind of, of, of mid journey here. So um, the uh, what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to get rid of, you know, the smoke and all that stuff just just to get us a cleaner background here. I do appreciate that. That's awesome that you just went through your library and pulled that out for me and then zoomed out. Um, definitely, definitely helps out to have the original prompt. Uh, we don't have to like retro engineer a lot in order to do that. So there you go. That one looks pretty clean to me. I'm going to bring the crop down on that. And, um, you know, I can also use object selection tool here in order to try to have it figure out where the character is in here. And you can see my computer's lagging trying to figure this out. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. And, and it did an okay job. You know, there's definitely some, some wonkiness here and there. Like, it didn't see the sleeve here uh, until after I clicked on it. But um, it, it, my, it, yes, again, you're watching my my frame rates my frame rate drop super hard as I do this. But um, you could see that we have a little bit of you know usable. Uh, I'm just going to quickly highlight, select some of this stuff, and we'll just keep some of that red for now. Um, not really worry too much about it otherwise. Just because I need to have a clean background on this in order for us to get this to work. So um, I'm going to boop, boop there. And yeah, I think that that's probably good enough. Um, I'm just going to uh, copy paste that real quick, get rid of this. And um, let's see if just by, just by removing the background entirely, if I can get some cleaner hands out of this. Uh, I'm just experimenting here. I don't really know if this is going to work. 
Um, if I write hands, it'll it'll make it like a real human hand. It will not not look like the right color or nothing like that. And I'm not surprised that this doesn't work either. So that's all good. Um, so let's go ahead and just use this. Um, it doesn't really matter too much that we have some murkiness in the hands because at least in my experience that as long as you get the core body and stuff, you're good. But I do need to fix the fact that I removed the flower earlier. So I'm just going to burp, burp and see if that does the trick like it did before. Um, so it was made in Niji cute if that helps. Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, and we, I I don't I don't really rely on Niji too much honestly um especially if I'm just kind of um messing around with stuff but if I'm like if I'm really determined to make an anime then I I will instinctively like you know jump over to Niji at the beginning but it it, it the reality is, is I'm more often converting to Niji rather than starting with it uh and I'll explain why that is here in a minute but um let's go ahead and just make a dot there for that for the jacket there um and I, I i i should grab from the other image the tie that we made because i do like how that tie came out so i'm just gonna work and we're going to just copy that over and see if that works hey bob hey all right not surprised so this is an example of where when you zoom out right you're not actually gaining any pixel like when you pan you get you get a bigger image but when you zoom you don't actually get a bigger image. It's actually going to lower the resolution of the details that you had before in order to make room for all the, you know, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to try to uh, artificially enhance here. Um, and the way I tend to do this is I'll use a blending mode and blending modes are super essential for really making images right, you know, in, in Photoshop and stuff, but you can also use them for alignment. So, um, first I convert to a smart object. I just do that instinctually for everything now, uh, especially after generative stuff. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to switch the blending mode to exclusion or difference. Um, and we're going to basically try to get these things to, uh, to show back up again, basically pull these in until the image just disappears. But the problem is, is that some of the generative stuff is actually still there. Like it's different than it was before. And now all the zebra stripes are blacked, blackened out. That tells me, okay, those are aligned now. And if I hit normal here, boom, everything is look, looks right here. Uh, I do need to do a little bit of edge fixing here because my selection didn't completely cover what was empty here. So I'll just, again, this is what I use generative fill the most is I'll just find little hard edges that I don't like and highlight them and basically just say fill and we'll see what we get after that, you know? Um, and if you guys want to experiment, uh, oh yeah, try the removal tool for that. Yeah, I should, I should actually experiment with, with more tools than just gen fill <laughs> uh, in Photoshop beta. I use the object selection a lot, uh, honestly. Um, but Okay, so we have this. This looks good now. Uh, I think that looks good anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse everything into this character here. And I'm just going to check with the marquee to make sure I have no weird bits on the edges. And I think that's good. Cool. Um, and now, if you guys want to follow along with your own characters and stuff, you're more than welcome to use VC Create so that I can see them inside of Discord here. And that way, you know, like we we basically work together on a character. Um, but uh, this is this is definitely going to be the uh, um, the <laughs> the part where, where where some folks are going to get lost a bit because of you know like some of, some of like my methods here tend to be a little a little wacky. So let's 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 give this a try here. I'll try to so, keep an eye on the text chat for you. I appreciate that for sure. Uh, I do have like a one like single minded brain. It could be a little tough for me to notice it all. So I really appreciate that kinky. I really do. Um, the, uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to crop this down to just the character here, something like that. And um, I am going to now uh, basically just highlight, select all of this and um, make sure it's flattened so that we have a nice white background in the background. Uh, and then I'll just copy this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually paste it inside of Discord here. This will give us a URL 
that we can now use um, when doing image injections or blends. Okay, so um, I'll just open that up here. I just use middle click and that gets me, I can go up to the top of the URL here and just copy it, or you can right click and hit copy URL. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're first going to make a turnaround that actually doesn't include the image at all. Um, this is this is specifically to try to get the image weight of the image that we just you know got the URL from to influence the turnaround rather than try to draw a turnaround based off of this image. So um, the, the 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 there's a neat tool that's inside of Midjourney which you may not know about called slash describe, and slash describe is going to let us be able to um, uh, to essentially have um, a a machine output of what, what it thinks is inside the image here. It might get us some good starting points for the prompts that we want to use. Um, and we can see here, it says a man dresses the tiger carries a bow tie in the style of digital neon sketch fab simplified and stylized portraits, blah, 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 blah. All these are useful things to, 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 to know, like the fact that it referenced costume a bunch could be a, a nice way for us to like force a, a head on there. Right. But I'm just going to hit the Imagine All button so we can see what this sort of does. Um, and and that's that's going to be, you know, it's not going to have Niji. It's not going to have any of the, like, data set modifications here. But you can see some of them are, like, instantly reliable. Like, the, the Tiger costume seems to be a pretty good one right off the bat. Um, but we can check all four of these results and see if any kind of lean towards, you know, what we had before. And I think this one is probably... The best. Uh, it says a man in a suit wearing a tiger costume in the style of cloud punk, 2D game art, luminous portraits, southern gothic inspired, light navy, magenta, commission for, and 3D. I have a suspicion here that the phrasing commission for um, is oftentimes used in order to create what looks like, you know, like a DD and kind of character request, you know? Uh, it's just... That's the metadata that you would imagine that someone on DeviantArt would would have posted if they like made a commission for somebody, right? So I see commission for a lot uh, that pops up out of these whenever we do character stuff. Um, but what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna just kind of um, use some of these words. There's some of them that we will not need, but I'm just gonna do this off of this one prompt. If you really wanna go ham on this, combine all them together and start removing words and see which ones have the effects that you that you want or don't want and that way you can explore this more properly but for now uh we have all this text here so um mm, ham uh <laughs> uh i don't know what that was in reference to uh style cute okay cool uh i'll i'll see all your your images here uh oh, wow wow yeah some of them uh, I'll 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 save them to dig through here in a minute because I, I want to kind of get through this here, um but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh luminous parts uh yeah we're gonna keep luminous parts because we have like a glowing kind of character art here southern gothic inspired that's an interesting phrasing um I'm gonna remove the colors as well uh let's just let's just go with this um so I I basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, at the very beginning of the prompt, I'm going to say full body turnaround, multiple poses. I'm going to see if that's enough. And it's a, since it's a male, it's a male character, I am going to say, uh, well, actually, all the results we got were pretty male already, so it might be redundant to include a pronoun. But for now, I'm going to just send this over, and we're going to see if, uh, if we can do this. Um, it's kind of funny uh, that you mentioned Jesus because I am uh, I, I will say this I am currently working on a They Might Be Giants song. Uh, I love Di They Might Be Giants. It's such a fun fun band, Same. and I, I I have a lot of fun with um with one of their songs, uh, and that'll be coming out soon. So out of the results for this one, um you know it's it's not really too usable of a turnaround. There's definitely some some uh Street Fighter kind of bulk going on with this character here. Uh, but I do like the last one here. It might give us some options, but it's still not really too much of a turnaround. So I'm going to try to put some weights on this. Basically copy my prompt, and I'm going to try to force it to have a higher weight on full body turnaround. Um, so this is done with, with uh, 
with weights, you can just kind of type a number after two colons and it will it will basically put more emphasis on certain words by doing that. The the total number can't be like every every number I think is by default one, but it can't be a negative number by the end of it. So if you put a bunch of negative prompts in it, you'll eventually run into a limit. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, you know, I, I do think that we we're definitely diverging immediately away from a tiger person, but this first one here is actually pretty legit. Um, it, it, it has some weird inconsistencies between these. Basically, it's three different characters, right? But um, at least I know that this is starting to work. So I'm just going to reroll this a couple times. And then we'll do the image injection to kind of bring the character back. Now, the thing is, is that we already have a bit of a dark outfit that's on there. And that's what we want to recreate the character is some kind of dark outfit. So we might start describing the clothing of the character before we do the image injection. So um, let's take a look-see here. Make a little birdhouse in your soul. I love that song. It's, a good, it's such a good song. Um, so there's there's definitely some really interesting kind of like cat people getting born out of this right now, um, where it's kind of merging a little a little more uh a little more interesting results but let's let's go ahead and start to describe the character a bit um so it is a um let's see here multiple poses and then i'm going to say that it's a purple um like is it i would say that that's like a vest uh like purple let's let's do let's do a formal Formal purple attire, just so we can get a little bit of diversity there. Uh, red bow tie. And um, let's see, white leopard print shirt. And I'm just going to use, like, the problem with using a bunch of attire, like describing a bunch of attire, is that we start to look instantly like a photo shoot or like an advertisement, like something that you would, like, buy, right? So um, it also true, it's going to likely pull the humanoid out. I'm mean, sorry, pull the tiger out of the equation entirely. So and we can see that kind of on display here. So now uh, we are going to, um, you know, it's, so the tiger costume needs to come much more up front. Uh, so let's do a man in a suit wearing a tiger costume. So the formal attire is probably redundant in that way, in that way. But I'm going to put this in the front and we're going to do a in a purple suit like this and get rid of formal purple attire and then I'll, we're going to run that again uh let's see a full body turn around multiple poses a man in a suit is wearing a hedgehog costume in the style of pointy punk luminous portraits anthropomorphic hedgehog in a suit from brandon that's cute um i think that i think that there's some uh i love the idea of a bunch of like punk rock punk rock hedgehogs right because their he heads are already spiky you know what i mean it would be really fun to see all right so we we definitely we definitely lost um <laughs> uh we need to make the tiger purple completely uh this is really funny looking though i love the pose of the second one here i'm gonna up res that because it's just funny looking um there you go yeah he's ready to kung fu fight you uh that's hilarious um but let's go ahead and say it's a specifically a purple tiger. I think that that, that could help here. Um, doot, doot, doot. Purple tiger costume. And then in a purple suit wearing a purple tiger costume. Okay. And we didn't get any of the leopard print at all. Like, I'm not really too surprised about that. We'll add that later. Um, in fact, it's probably going to come back when we do the image uh, or like the character injection. So we'll see. Um, and I'm going to say that because we this is redundant, I'm going to get rid of this here. All right, let's let's see what this one gives us, and we'll just kind of take it from there. The cat boys went full feline. It's where the cat boys become cat men. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, cool. All right, this is a lot more what I was looking for. Okay. So let's let's do this one here because that's almost perfect for what we want. Uh, at least to get started here, there's no tail on um, uh, on the tiger here, uh, which is exactly what we want. 
right? Because there's no tail on the original image art either. So now that we have a full body turnaround of just this character, what we can do is we're going to grab the URL from um, from here. So let's uh, hop back over up to our image here that we posted. There we go. There it is. I'm just going to open that up so that I have the URL again. We're going to come back to our prompt that we up res that we liked, copy the link from this, and then I'm going to do both a variation strong and just paste the link at the begin there, beginning. I'll do again on variation subtle. Subtle is probably going to give us much more usable results for this particular part of, of, the, of the tutorial. But what I'm also going to do, because... Um, because uh, 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 because it was recommended that they did Niji, I'm also going to do it where I paste the URL in the front, and then I go at the end here, and I write Niji 5. And we could do different styles, but I'm just going to try to see what happens if we basically convert these to, to anime while we do the image injections. Okay? So let's see what we get out of this. Um, variation strong is most likely going to start to lose the turnaround. Um, we may get some usable stuff, but variation subtle is where we actually get, you know, the, the, the ability to choose different parts of this. Um, this is already pretty cool. Uh, I like, I like the, uh, I like the, the fourth one here. Um, there's some pretty neat results out of this, but if I now up res this or just take a closer look at it, this is the variation subtle. Um, and it's, it's way more like orange, you know, like the traditional, what you would imagine a tiger, but it gets us really close to, uh, to, to a product that I can bring into Photoshop now and turn it into a usable turnaround. Um, you'll notice that none of them have like the white shirt, right? Cause it's pulling a lot from the business suit sort of attire stuff. We'll be able to inpaint that here in a minute. So I'm going to look at the other results before we get committed to any one of these. Um, but we have, let's see, we also have this other subtle, which was without using Niji. And you can see that we have a lot more realism, uh, in the tigers. Some of them even look like they're like porcelain dolls of tigers, right? Uh, if you switch to Niji, if you do that whole Niji trick where you're switching the Niji midway through, what you end up getting is a more hand-drawn aesthetic without making it look like you're, you know, making an, an anime or whatever. It basically, it's a middle ground or at least a temporary middle ground for me until like there's a data set or a style specifically for Western animation. Uh, that, that That's what I'm so stoked for is when we can start to prompt specifically within Tex Avery or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, one day, I hope. Um, but you can see here, this is to me, to me, this is far too close to realism unless that's what we were going for. I'm going to aim away from that because I want to see the results in a more hand-drawn, fun, uh, at least fun for me. But I want to show the variation strongs as well. We actually got a real purple tiger out of that one. That that impresses me more than the cigarette, honestly. Um, just because, like, you know, this is pretty cool to see. But you notice we lost the turnaround entirely. This is not a surprise to me with variation strong. I see that Boozlegast has up the the one, and I'm going to use his that he up -rezzed. Now that we have this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this and bring it over to Photoshop just so that I have it, because we, we may not get the results that we want doing what I'm going to do next. Um, we are going to try first creating more poses and then start getting into reactions and expressions. Okay. So uh, first, I'm going to do a zoom out. And a, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done 1.5. It doesn't really matter. But I'm also going to pan left and pan right without writing or changing anything. And the reason being is I just want to see what happens. I want to see what I get out of it. Um, more often than not, I like how stupefied he looks while smoking. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get there uh, in terms of, you know, making it more Joe Camel um, out of the whole thing. I like how stupefied he looks when smoking. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, 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 yeah, it's it's about true though, right? I mean, like it it is it smoking's dumb. No one should be smoking. It is it is 
it is honestly one of the dumbest things you can do. And I'm speaking as somebody who has a, who occasionally smokes because I, I get a lot of stress and stuff sometimes. I was just going to um, say, that's what I imagine I look like when I smoke. Stupefied. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wanted to show you guys here, now that we got the results of this, um, Pan is very, very, very useful for getting things like back of the heads and stuff. Um, it's going to look at other like turnarounds and stuff and start to like go, oh, okay, this is this is a common thing that would be next to this. So, boom, now we have our three quarters and we have our backs and we have all the other poses or other angles of the character here. Um, and, uh, you know, if you see one that's cut off, just zoom out again and you'll be able to get all your shapes. He even has a tail in one of them. So there you go. Um, but I, I see a really useful one here, actually, which is this first one on the zoom out. And then um, I want to grab uh, the third one of this one. Uh, the first one of this one. I think I think that should be enough for now. Um, and the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on over to Photoshop here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling out these assets and ba basically making this character sheet. So um, we'll go ahead and make a bigger canvas here. And I am just going to start copying and pulling out unique poses. So you can notice the reason why I saved the image from before is because of how much bigger it is. Like you see, like now I have higher resolution versions of it because I zoomed out to make this one or I panned to make this one, I think. Uh, either way, it's, it's, it, is, it is something that resolution size, uh, resolution tends to drop the more you expand on your images. So... Um, now though, I'm just going to delete everything that's redundant. So everything here and boom, now I have that one. I'm going to just keep that to the side for now. And we will hop back over to, I can close these now. Don't need these, but I will keep this actually, because I want to leave that on the character sheet so you can see what the original image is here. So there you go. Um, now I am just going to grab some of the other poses we exported. Got this one here. Again, delete any redundant information. You only need the character that you only need that specific pose that is new, that is, you know, different than the rest. And you might end up deleting some of the original turnarounds too, just to just to get closer to what you want. Um but you can see just how small like the the resolution got on the characters here. So um I'm just gonna come in, zoom in, drag this guy here, and copy that over. Boop. And again, I'm just I'm basically just tacking on more and more options because the next stage is going to be doing um, the the posings for and that. This involves more of the character story. And this is where we open the black box to determine characteristics that Boozle Gas described this character as being that. And I'm going to pick the poses based off of some of his responses. So or their response. I, I Sorry to gender you. I didn't know if. Uh, yeah, uh, the the key thing here is that I'm just collecting poses um, and he's always going to have his hands in his pockets. Like that's the main negative with doing this sort of uh, this picking this exact turnaround is that his hands are like almost always in his pockets and all these. So we're going to have to force his hands out of those pockets uh, eventually. Uh, for now, though, I think we can it might be kind of funny because if he runs with his hands in his pockets, he's just going to look like a jackass, you know, like like <laughs> uh, like it, we, we need we need some so we need some arms uh, to, to, to really make this work. But we'll just start with this. So um, first thing I'll do is uh, we're, we're going to we're going to bring the, the heads back to purple here in a bit. Wow, I'm lagging really good. That's fun. Um, that's right, because I'm using I'm using object selection. It always lags really good on with that. We'll go ahead and just do uh, classic magic wand. And um, that worked really well, actually. So we're good. Um, let's go ahead. And I always do this thing where I copy the image that I'm deleting information from and then hide the layer. You can't really see because my head's there. I'll switch back over to tablet. All right. I, I do this copy thing a lot, which makes my files massive. But whenever I'm about to delete anything from a generated image, I always copy it and then leave a hidden layer underneath it just so that I have it. Um, and uh, that, that means that if I ever need to revert, then I, I have it there. 
So uh, we're just going to do this on the rest of these now. And that will get us enough image references to make a very reliable character. At least reliable enough to get our poses. So that's pretty cool. Under healing brush and spot brush. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll check that out here a little bit. But Magic Wand is doing exactly as the name implies, and it's doing a magical job at, at fixing all this. So that's cool. Um, don't need this. Okay, cool. So um, what we're going to do is I just need to make sure that these images are far away from each other enough that I can easily highlight and select them into Discord. But there's one thing that we can do right now that's going to help this out a lot. Um, we are going to bring continuity back to the character. Um, this is, I do it manually more often than, than in Midjourney in painting, but I, I'm, I'm slowly finding out that, uh, that most of this can be done within painting a lot better. So what we're gonna do though, is uh, we are going to first try to recreate some elements of this image inside of these turnarounds really quick. So uh, for example, the tie is completely wrong in all of these. So what we can do, is uh, I'm going to leave that image open here, something like that. And, you know, you could always like copy the actual tie and put it there, but I'm going to just try to see if I can get away with highlight selecting this area here. And we're just going to try to recreate the, you know, the outfit here. So let's see. White button up, red bow tie. And I'm going to see if that does the job enough. If not, then we can we can do another image injection and try to like force it within mid journey. Um, pretty, it, very inefficient to do it that way, honestly. But it is one way. There you go. Look at that. That's fine. That that works really well. Um, yeah, that's great. And we'll see what the other options are. Yeah, I like I, I like I like all these actually. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's just stick with this one. Um, and then uh, we need to get the tie back on here. I always select a more generous area than what I actually need to do it because you never really know what you know what additional pixel area you're gonna need to manipulate here. So let's just do that again. Uh, white button up, red bow tie. And I guess I could select all of the necks and stuff and just hit it at once, but, I don't really know if that's going to get us the continuity I'm aiming for. The important thing is, though, is the original image reference is sitting in the canvas here. So it's able to refer to this image whenever I am doing this kind of stuff. I've noticed that that helps me a ton when it comes to trying to maintain continuity in Photoshop. But the thing that we're really aiming for here is that the closer we can get these turnarounds to look like the original character, kind of looks like Trump, uh, but the closer we can get it to the original character is the, just the fact that um, it, it lets us do a lot less work later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to keep one of the red bow ties here, like this one. And I'm just going to kind of highlight select around that and see if we can just get a white button up without the, you know, without mentioning the tie here. But I do really appreciate everybody for tuning in here today. Um, it is Friday, so I, I figure that uh, y'all are are having a good time doing other things too. If you're if you're not here, but I I I always really appreciate it when you guys can spend some time with me and and start making stuff together. Um, I think that there's just so much potential for community, you know, collaborative storytelling with AI imagery, and the first step to it, the very first step, is to be able to be able to personify it be able to put something that you consider yourself or whatever uh into the image right so if you if you can identify yourself or your characters inside of the image you immediately have a a, a, a like a, the, the the building blocks for a story that you can make right it's not just a bunch of dreamy landscapes or random people you don't recognize 
Um, that's why it's so important for us to do this. Um, but yeah, so well, that's good enough. I think that's good enough. So I'm going to keep doing this just a little bit more until we have enough of this to match at least at least with the key aspects which is the color silhouettes um i i don't know if the if silhouettes the right word for this it really it it to me it works like silhouettes yeah we've talked about this before where the silhouette of a character is incredibly important in character design because it means that your character is easily recognizable amongst the crowd every character should have a unique silhouette in your story um and if everyone looks like tigers with suits on, then no one's going to be able to know which tiger it is without like identifying a specific color on the tiger or some other identifier, right? It just makes a lot more sense to look at each character as like, you know, a unique, um, a unique blob or shape, and then draw the character details on the inside by hand, just so you could see what that's like to see what sort of effect you have on the, you know. I guess I guess the reaction that you get from from your art. Uh, it's and very I, common. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, like Woozle's tiger ha has a cigarette. Like if he always has a cigarette, that would be part of his cigarette. Like his his profile that. Um, right. Made him separate from the other tigers in his story. Exactly. Yeah, he could be the one badass smoking tiger out of all of them. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't just have to be color. It could be behavior of the character. Um, and it's. It is it is kind of important to to note that whenever you're you're kind of designing characters, um, mid journey isn't exactly like it doesn't work the same way as you would with a traditional. Um, I'm just gonna actually just generate that without anything written. It doesn't work like a traditional sort of artist would. Um, it's gonna be a median. It's gonna find the middle ground of everything as opposed to trying to express themselves in a specific way at least in my experience um but uh it, it, it at least when it comes down to that like you have all sorts of like weird little things that we're gonna have to take into account um particularly when it comes to stuff that people get really upset about when they see it like in generated images they go oh man if everything was just why does it always have six fingers or why does it always have uh, some weird artifact that there it's most likely because parts of your image don't make sense um like it at least at least in my experience whenever i was like like the cigarette for example i'll probably just prompt in the text that he has a cigarette as opposed to making it a prop inside of the character art um because it might just constantly give him like cigars or other smoking things that that may screw us up later so i got most of this shirt done here i'm just wanting to i really just want a damn red bow tie on this so let's let's just try to write that down real quick and you guys can stop watching me just fiddling around photoshop um but we're getting really close we only need to do one more shirt after this uh and then color correct for the purple all right that's pretty good yeah i'm gonna say that first one that's good enough okay cool so there is a there are, are also some minor inconsistencies like the tiger's head is smaller on this one than on this one and we could correct for that manually but for now, I think this is good. Uh, but now I need to also make the, the character's color match more here. So uh, only thing I'm going to do for that is uh, come into here. And I'm actually, I think I can get away with just image, like color replacement. But let's just first select all of our turnarounds here, smash them all into one layer so that we can easily manipulate all of it at once. Let's see here. I'm just going to use replace color. I'm going to grab the orange from the tiger here, and I'm going to see if I can get away with just changing that orange to purple. Something like that. And then increase the fuzziness. And I need to find a little bit of a better purple. I'm oh, sorry, a better orange here. So let's do something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And there you go. Um, now the purple is actually the wrong hue. So I can now come into... Now that I have that applied, I can hit replace color and do a very, very t like lots of fuzziness on there because we want to affect all of the purple that's here. And we want to see if we can get it a little bit closer to that more bluish purple. And that's pretty good right here. Um, the one thing that's missing out of all this is the glowing eyes and nose. And 
you know, I'm I'm basically just going to recreate that. Um, a good job, by the way, with the tiger look cool. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate showing you guys how all this stuff works, at least for me, at least how I do it. There's some like highlights and stuff in the face that do not that are not represented in the original, but I'm just going to kind of accept that, honestly, uh, just because it would be a lot of work for me to remove all these highlights. Um, so what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to recreate some of the glowy bits here. So uh, we'll first just kind of select that middle that color for it. And I am going to uh, just make a new layer above it. And with my handy dandy tablet pen here, you don't need a tablet pen, but I'm just going to do it because it's going to make this go a lot faster. Uh, I'm just going to start filling in parts of this with that color that we that we saw was for glowing bits here. So we'll do the eyes and the and the uh, and the nose here. And I'm just going to do that over every part of it with just the new layer. And then we're going to use blending modes to kind of make that make that color blend in with the shape better. Because obviously this looks like trash when you just draw over it with big blocky colors like this with no gradients or anything like that. We are instead relying in, you know more on blending modes when we get to that stage here to, to kind of fix this stuff. So I'll go ahead and fill all that in. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cycle through some blending modes really quick just to see if we get anything that's a little closer to how that glow is there. I think that's OK, but there we, you know, it's we, we want to make sure we can break the darkness of the nose there a bit. Yeah, I might have to split this into two where the nose is one. And yeah, let's do that. Let's split it into two here. So I have it on lighten right now. That might actually be good enough for us to get going here. But if we look at the original image sheet, there's actually a halo effect that's around it, right? That's like an orange color. So I'm going to select that color. That's well, more like a magenta. Interesting. All right. Or more like a pink. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have the color here selected. I'm going to do a blending option. And we are just going to apply a... Um, an outer glow here and then switch the color to our new uh our new color here and i'll then drop the size and spread really good look at that we're already getting there increase the opacity a little bit and yeah we have his face glowing now so that's awesome um and if we wanted to, we can actually come in and uh, kind of adjust some values for that. But for now, I'm actually going to now finish up the eyes um, because we do have a little bit of like overlap from the from the, um, the kind of like shoddy <laughs> drawing work I was doing there. And we also need to recreate the pupils. So this will be the last bit of drawing that I do on this character. Um, I like to do a pretty low hardness and then drop the opacity really good to make it a little more painterly, right? And that gets us a little more um, feathering when we do this stuff, which will make it look more, one, it'll make it look a lot more generated. And then two, it, it's also going to help us kind of bring back some of these elements without necessarily deleting all of it. So I'm going to go with something like that to start. Delete a little bit of this here too. And you can see a lot of these, we don't really need to do a lot. It's just kind of cleaning up my thicker, you know, blobbier line art that I had earlier there. So that's pretty good there. There we go. I'm just going to leave that as is. It's not too important. We're not talking about like a ton of pixels here that we're going to be relying on. It's just, it's just, it's just trying to bring the character back to what, what looks right, you know? And the more experience you have with drawing, the better, and oh, by the way, the more media you watch, honestly, the better your results are going to be because you'll be able to identify these problematic things um, and adjust for them before you start doing injections and stuff. Okay, so I've cleaned up the glows a little bit. Um, there is one last detail. I, uh, you know, we'll worry about the leopard print later. I, I, I think we can get away with that with injection. 
But uh, we do have some inconsistencies that we need to address, particularly the fact that the there's there's no there, like on the original character sheet there's no um, uh, napkin in the in the pocket, while on some of these there is a napkin. So I'm just going to highlight select all of these like this. And I'm just going to have it just fill it. We're just going to see what it does with that without actually telling it which layers to do it on or anything like that. We even have a dark one that's here. And I'll just generate over that and we'll see what we get. And I, I will say that whenever you're doing this stuff in like outside of mid journey and whatnot, I, I try to do as much as I can on these streams inside of mid journey, but just for the sake of getting this character done here today, I think we're going to get away with a lot with, uh, which is with, with, with doing what I do to kind of speed run these characters. Uh, I did watch a guy get like literally, I think he, I think he had a bit of an existential crisis watching me make his character in about three minutes when he was struggling with it for like, you know, two hours or whatever. And it like, he yeah, would later learn that he's like a, like a rather not like well-known character designer, but he's like a rather like, like someone that I would be like, Holy crap. I, I didn't know you were in the room with me kind of guy. Um, he, he definitely, definitely, uh, I don't think I made his day, uh, uh <laughs> that day as much as he loved seeing his character and stuff on there. I was, I, 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 he, he was a little upset with, uh, with how fast I was able to do everything. But, all right. All right. All right. So there, there is a little bit of like continuity things that we can address here. Um, the, uh, the main, the main thing is, is that there's like these green cuffs, like they sorry, these green collars here. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to say let's just for now I'm going to skip those because that's one that's one thing that we can really easily apply later. But I do think that this is going to give us a little more reliable results because we're going to be focusing on less color palette with that. Um, feel free to yell at me later for for doing this if it ends up making it really off model, but we'll just go we'll just go from here. So I have this here. We have all of our character poses and such. There's no reason for me to shrink these down to match in scale. It literally does not make a difference for what we're doing here. Um, because after I bring all these together like this, okay, so you see I have them all in one. The only thing I need to do is we need to make sure that they're separated enough that I can just come into here and uh, basically quickly marquee them. And right now I'm a little too close on this one. So let's go ahead and move that over like that. Move this guy over here. And I will end up getting rid of a cigarette in his mouth. I, I'm just going to say that now. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll worry about, um, yeah. And then, and then we'll get to the actual injection here. That's the last thing I really need to do here is this cigarette is one. It's in the wrong place. It's like coming out of a trachea. That's uncomfortable. Um, and it's just, no. I did think of a, a really, like, I have a villain character that I'm working on right now, and he smokes by lighting, but his head is on fire, like, all the time, right? And I want it to be that he smokes by putting it at his neck like a like a trachea. Like, it like just it just evo evokes some really uncomfortable imagery of someone lighting a cigarette by sticking it in the hole in their neck. Like, I, I love all sorts of creepy stuff like that. Like uh, that old anti-smoking yeah. PSA? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, like the old guy smoking PSA, exactly, exactly. Or Juno but, from Beetlejuice. Yeah, I want it to be that he flips the, but like you know, you were expecting the smoke out of the trachea hole, right? What? No, no, no. I want him to put the cigarette in there, and it comes out lit. Uh, mm -hmm. like that. That's that's what I'm that's that's what I'm going for with this. But let's. I just did a quick fill on the on the cigarette here, and that that should be good here. I think that's fine. Uh, so uh, all right, cool. Now that I have all this. And everything is basically separated good enough for what we need to do. I need to give it a white background. Um, all right. So Beetlejuice was the first thing I thought of. Yeah, right. Yeah, I love the I love Beetlejuice so much. It's such a good movie. Um, I, I really hope that the the sequel or whatever they're working on right now is any good. I really because I would hate to see this generation tainted with a bad Beetlejuice movie. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be awful. But I, I, I really do enjoy the original Beetlejuice. So what we're going to do now that I have this all flattened onto a white background layer. Okay. 
I'm going to marquee select one of the character poses, and then I'm going to hop over to Discord here, uh, and I am going to paste it into there. You notice how it makes a nice white box around it. That's what we want. We don't actually want an alpha channel, at least not for the way I do things here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do this multiple times over until we have all of our poses inside of a single message for, uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be a single message, but it just makes it easier to understand. Um, we're going to just highlight, select all the other poses and just start pasting them in there. So we've got this guy. And the cool thing is, is that when we're all done with this, you could take the poses that are like, you know, Google, uh, Google guest character sheet here. And you can modify the character sheet however you want. So if you want to make another character that, like, say you want to make, like, a spy versus spy assassin story, right? Where it's, like, two two tigers that are, or two different animals or whatever, and you just change their colors. That's all you need to do is you need to change the tiger color, and boom, you have now two different characters that can be in your story and stuff like that. Um, but we're just kind of coming through here. Um, okay. Someone in on one of our local pubs tried something very similar to that when he got his trach inserted. And so, yeah, these things really do happen. Oh, God, that's so gross. Oh, man. Um, it makes me uncomfortable thinking about like thinking about that. I really I really like at, like honestly, like part of the reason I go for like I, I, I don't like using AI imagery for horror because I think it's pretty like lazy, honestly. Like and I, I hate saying lazy. It's not the right word, but I I, I, I it's just it's, most of the stuff we make is horror show nightmare fuel, okay? I get it. I get it. It's 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 part of the AI equation right now, but um I really don't like leaning into it because it makes people think that everything we make is just horror show awful. Um and I would much rather just try to show off that it can do much more than that. So, now that we have all of our links here, they're all about the same size or sorry, the same like, you know, uh amount of blank or empty space around it. I can just send that over to Discord here. Um, what that does is it makes a bunch of images, right? Uh, as a as just a single message, but I'm going to open each one of these messages as uh, as its own, you know, URL here, so that I can grab all of the URLs. Okay, cool. So now I just copy and paste that all of these links that are here. You can see they're all individualized now. All of these links I want to paste into like a Word document just so that I have it available to me. Um, let's go down here. There we go. So I'm going to paste one and then two and three. Now, remember, guys, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that there's adequate enough spaces, like at least one space um between every link because it you know you can break these links really easily um as soon as you just get one one link out of position right or at least at least broken like you you, you didn't put the dot and dot png or whatever and these won't work it, it mid journey will actually yell at you for it they'll say that th this is an invalid link um but now that we have all these as a word document that i can quickly copy and paste we're going to we're going to before we like save it in the mid journey and do all that stuff. We want to make sure that this is a a, a functional character, okay? So um, we'll have some fun with this first too. We'll we'll do a blend first just to see what the results are on that. Hit slash imagine, and then just paste the links. Um, this what this is gonna do is it's gonna try to make a median between all your images, so it's going to very much look like our turnarounds, okay? Um, but it lets us know what worked and what didn't, at least right off the bat. Um, and yeah, we're very close. I mean, we have a purple tiger with a suit and stuff. He's just missing the bow tie. So that means that now look at that shark dude. Oh my God. Are you trying to remake street sharks? Because if you are, I, I will, I will throw you every $5 single $5 bill in my wallet now. And it's one single five. So you're going to get a, you're going to get a $5 bill. If you, if you, if you make street shark, remake street sharks as an entire episode, I'm, I'm going to require that you do a whole episode for $5. Um, the, that, that I, I will, I will, I'll feature your crap all, all day. Uh, that sounds, I, I would love for street sharks to come back anyway. It would also be better, like sharks on Wall Street instead of wolves on Wall Street. 
you know, that might be fun. Um, but okay. All right. So we know the character works aside from the bow tie. So I'm going to, um, let's just try to add red bow ties at the beginning of the prompt, just to see what we get out of that before we start doing injections, because we're doing blends right now. Blends are where you include the links at the beginning of, uh, or sorry, at inside of the prompt. Um, injections are where we include the links after we have our turnarounds. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm basically going to show you guys now that we have all of these URLs, how we, you know, basically force this character to come back into our prompts. Uh, like, okay, that's right. I need to open the black box here really quick. All right. So uh, you said you're into comedies, sci-fi, samurai movies, uh, experimental avant-garde art, and then, uh, and then of course, the instructional manuals. Um, let, me, let me switch this now over to um, so you guys can see what I'm seeing here. We see that uh, he set the, his alignment to chaotic good, neutral, like true neutral, and just chaotic evil. Okay? So what this means is that we can make the character arc from one to another in terms of the behavior of the character. Um, I, I, you probably want to go evil to good, honestly, uh, just, just for the sake of keeping a likable character. Um, it, it, yeah, uh, we can, we'll go from, we'll go from chaotic evil to, uh, chaotic good, because that's just a really easy jump to do. All right. So let's see what we got here with the red bow tie. You could see we instantly lost the tiger. We, well, actually it's kind of funny. We have a little bit of like an exaggerated example here going on um i do kind of want to up res that just because it's funny looking um but what i mostly want to show is the um uh is is how we do character injections so um let's see here so what i'm gonna do is uh, again we're gonna take our descriptions that we had from the tiger earlier uh so that would be you know a purple suit or yeah uh those tiger costume right so like you know Purple suit, tiger. Uh, we'll ju we'll just write purple twice. Why not? Purple suit, purple tiger, costume. And um, now, now at the beginning of this prompt, though, I'm gonna do full body, running, jumping, um, and multiple poses. And we're just gonna see if we get a silhouette that's somewhat close to our character that we have. We might need to put apply an aspect ratio to start to uh, really push these. But the idea here is that we're trying to get some poses of the character that we can then inject into. And the thing is, is that um, because we didn't emphasize a turnaround at all, we definitely got some like fun results in terms of a single pose, but maybe we can get away with doing multiple poses, okay? So uh, I'm going to write I Let's absolutely love number two, where he's like clicking his feet in the mid. -jump. Yeah, he's like tap tap, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, let's let's go ahead and write full body. Um, let's 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 put multiple poses on the front here instead of full body, and then um, and then running, jumping, action poses. Let's that's right. We should also put action poses. Because if we want a, cha a chaotic evil character, he's either going to be like an evil genius, so he's not really going to move around a lot. He's probably going to be just walking around with a cigarette or whatever. Um, or if he's like, you know, a, a real, real evil villain, he's going to be running like a tiger and moving around real fast. So at least in my opinion, I think that's how we should be like with this. chaotic evil like the mask and just doing goofy as heck. Stuff. Yeah, really goofy. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, the mask is, is not really the, the character who steals the mask from Jim Carrey is the chaotic evil one, I think. Or at least no, no, he's he's the I, uh, I don't think he would be considered chaotic because he he's he's trying to like, I don't the know. Spirit I, that, of the mask was chaotic. Yes, exactly. It's uh, everything is chaotic coming out of that mask. Uh mm -hmm. But um, okay, cool. All right, so you can see we got we got a couple different like running running poses here. They're not very functional for what we want to do, but I'm going to re-roll it anyway and see what we get. Thank you all guys for the friend requests. I will I will mention here really quick. Uh, I I have not addressed this yet. Um, whenever I'm whenever you guys send me like private messages and stuff. I'm I I'll respond if it makes sense for me to do it, but most likely, it's gonna be on my Discord, and I'll just end up linking you to my Discord channel. 
You can go to my website, victorgnarly.com, click the Discord button on the top right corner, and that let you join my private Discord. Um, there's no like password, there's nothing like that. It is, it, it's, it's just a place where I generate things. Um, most of your answers that you have, or most of the questions that you have, will be answered inside of there, and it, even for a private message, because frankly, if if you're gonna make me, if you're gonna make me work on your character privately, I'm gonna make sure it's not private, so other people can and learn. You know, I'm gonna link your Discord. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it for sure. But I just wanted to emphasize, though, that I try to do everything publicly because then I get less pings. People can just see it and find it on the Discord, so that's cool. Um, but now let's let's see what our results are for these turnarounds here. I think actually the running and jumping from the first one is quite usable because we'll be able to we'll be able to uh, isolate the little character in the back and, and remove it later. Um, it's very close in terms of the silhouette. It doesn't have a tail. It does. The colors are best about right. There's pins. I mean, it's definitely leopard stripes all over it. But now now what I'm going to do. <laughs> wow, I always went meow. Uh, but meow, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our links that we uh, have. Meow? Right meow. <laughs> right meow. Uh, it, all right. Uh, I get distracted so easily thinking about movie references. Um, but anyway, so let's let's go ahead and copy and paste all of our URLs into the beginning of this um, of this prompt here, and I'm just going to submit that and just confirm that that worked because I had a bunch of enters in it. Yeah, we're good. Uh, and again, <laughs> I'm going to just do the same process I did before, where I do a, a, a subtle and a strong. But I also run them with Niji. And then if you want to apply a style, you can. But I run them with this so that I get a more hand-drawn look. And it's less likely to upset people. Uh, I'll say it. I said this before. Uh, uh, oftentimes, if you go too realistic, people get really upset by the stuff that you share them. Because you shouldn't be able to do it. You shouldn't be able to have an entire cast of actors available at your disposal to do whatever you want them to do. They... You know, it's it's just kind of jarring for people right now. Eventually, they'll get used to it. But for now, if it's a drawn character, at the very least, people will look at it because if it's a live action, they get unless you're on the mid journey, mid journey Discord or mid journey subreddit or, or Facebook, you're probably going to be like, what what am I even looking at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like people get really, really thrown off by AI imagery. Um, but what I want you guys to do is to go through some of these cats and you know these 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 purple cats here and really really try to tell what the differences are between these right because you can really see this this is where your creative intent really comes in where you're going hey I want my character to be this level of energetic or I want my character to always be suave or I want him to do whatever this is where you determine that is where is is pulling your your movement or action poses because you know think about a shy character think about a character that is really timid they move differently than someone that's confident that that has their like back all the way up and is like like look at my character stretch when I stretch my own back out um yeah I I have a really slouched position I I I do terrible things to my back and Victor is the same way I had an artist call me out on it actually they were like. Look at Victor with his classic bad posture. I never intended Victor to have a bad posture, but he is based off of me and I have a bad posture. So the artist saw through me on that one. Um, but you can see with this tiger character here, uh, you can actually start to pick what sort of like what sort of character this is. So the what I see with this guy here like a studious jogger almost like yeah like he's in a business suit so he wouldn't be jogging in this outfit normally but it but it it just reminds me of someone who has a gait that that evokes a little more intent about the way that they walk right so if we were to pick this one and i'm gonna ask boozle guests to kind of have fun with this and 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 maybe do a couple of re-rolls maybe they'll find something they like but here's the main thing to remember from here on out the reroll button is basically useless for us because if I reroll this, just to show you guys what happens, if I reroll this, it will not do the image injection again. Instead, it will be as if I copied and pasted this text up here and just made a new prompt. I don't want that when we're doing this. So if I'm unhappy with these four results of this variation subtle here, this that has the Niji at the end of it, 
what I want to do is I want to come back up to the original prompt, and that's really easy to do. You just click on the little link here on the top. It'll jump you over to the prompt, and I want you to do it again. I want you to hit that button that you hit before, paste the links again, and then write Niji 5 again. This will actually preserve the depth map within this image so that every time you do that, it will give you a different result within the same composition. That is the main step that people screw up from my tutorial, is they don't understand that the reroll button doesn't work the way, it doesn't even work the same way as it did back in V4. Uh, with V4, I could reroll all day, and it would just keep doing exactly what I expected it to do. But reroll kind of does blends now. It doesn't do what I expect it to do. So just double back up to your variation, subtle or strong, and keep running it. You could see that when I did that, suddenly we we preserve a lot more of the uh, actually yes we preserve a lot more of the depth map. The character poses are almost all the same, but we can now pick and choose what we like and what we don't like about these. Okay, so now now that uh, you know we we've got a couple of these running, and I see uh, you know we have we have a couple of really fun jogs here i really like some of these jogs that are coming up here that definitely but you notice we're always losing that bow tie that bow tie keeps disappearing right so let's just say we really like this pose here i just like the way that he's doing that 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 walk here okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually going to write very i'm gonna click on very region and then i'm going to use the marquee tool select a generous area around it like this and we are going to see if this is enough to recreate the red bow tie okay and you notice that we also have lost the glow of the face and stuff but we'll, we'll probably have to redraw some of that but what i can do now is just write red bow tie at the front while keeping the image references keep that in mind i'm keeping the image references in there if i if I don't get the results that I want from doing this, I can just delete image references and try to rely on randomness to kind of give me what I want. Um, but let's just say that, um, you know, we, we, we go through all of this and we're like 100% happy with our, our results. The key thing is, is to add all of these poses back to your character sheet. And that's how you do poses. Um, the poses will let you kind of always determine the movement of the character in the prompt. So say we have an office space. If I inject turnarounds of this character running or jogging like this, he will be running and jogging inside the final result. Okay, so this is how you direct your characters is with these poses. You don't necessarily have to have image references, mind you. It just gets you there a lot faster. Um, so let's see what our results are for this. And we got no bow ties out of that. That's fine. Um, it, it'll it'll most likely be something that we're going to have to go rather generous with our in painting area to, to accomplish. So let's just select a large area there, large area here, and and just kind of see what we can get. But also because we know that the character doesn't have a tail, I'm also going to highlight select this and highlight select this, just to see without changing anything except for writing red bow tie if that's enough to be able to it might put a bow tie on his butt we'll see what it does um but it, it, it is it is kind of funny uh to see these sort of results i'm going to check out some of the other stuff you guys have been prompting here and give my give my throat a minute to get a to get a, a water uh, uh in here and then we'll then we'll take it from there yeah it, it kind of reminds me of like a corporate you know i i keep using corporate characters because i like i like i like uh, frankly, I like the idea of beating up on corporate characters, but I, I I do see a boss. I do see a tiger boss coming here. Is Victor ever going to take on the mouse? <laughs> uh, in my in my first episode, I had to make a very blurry version of Mickey Mouse. Um, I used a uh, I used a mosaic filter to make it look like he's super censored, right? But but my version of Mickey is that he wears a black glove and a white glove, and his suit is reversed to that. So like he has, he has a, a like basically a left a, like a like a blazer on, but the left side is white and the right side is is uh, with a white glove and and you know reversed on the other. Um, 
I mostly I mostly did that just so that um just so that I could have some unique intent with it, right? Uh and not just be a big old trademark violation. But uh but yeah, it's uh it, it is it is fun to to mess around with corporate characters. But you can see here we we did lose the tail, which was almost entirely because of our image references, right? We're not really getting the bow tie on this, so we'll end up manually recreating the bow tie. But um, it is amazing just how close we can get just by using these sorts of phrasing, like uh, cigarette ad and all that stuff. I know that you're adding there, Boozledorf, try to recreate the cigarette on there, but I'm actually going to in-paint the cigarette later um, because it's going to make a much cooler effect on the final product. Um, so what we can do, though... Oh, look at that! We got the bow tie! Oh my god, we did! Okay, hold on. Uh, this was from um, Chaos. Okay. Uh, Ancient Chaos read character turn around red bow tie and deleted everything and only kept what the bow tie? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 of course that worked. Of course using using Doctor uh, Doctor Who man there uh, worked too well on that. That is too funny. Okay, uh, I am I am far less at liber liberty to just like take things from movies and stuff, but this is genius. This is just genius to do that. Uh, that that is that is awesome. Um, cool. All right. So in Photoshop beta, though, now that we have a couple different poses, uh, I'm going I'm going to go back to the character sheet here. Uh, thank you so much, AC. That actually made my day when it came to that because I was not expecting to see his face uh, there at all. Um, that's that's great. Uh, all right, so Sometimes I have you to have to do really roundabout things within painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it helps that you dropped all the image references to just the one with the bow tie, right? Like that's really what was key. The learning lesson there was just I have so many image references of of, the, of a full body cat suit, right? Uh, it does it does just too much confusion of what my intent is there. So if you we probably we would have made the exact same effect if I would have just marqueed the bow tie and then an painted with that. So we'll do that here in a minute. But um, now uh, what I can do is start to isolate these poses and then um, and then basically bring them back to match the um, the the existing turnarounds that we have. So I'm just selecting all of these here and I could have in painted that tail to go away as well. But we'll worry about that later. And you can see what I'm essentially doing here is I'm just collecting all the poses that I might want to use later. Right. So. Oops. So in terms of. Like the expression sheet, which we'll get into next, the expression sheet is going to be a little more complicated because we need to we need to actually know what expressions we want to have for the character. Otherwise, it's going to take like, you know, a good a good amount of time to prompt every reaction. Right. And if you take the time, it's worth it. Trust me, it really is worth it to. Uh, to uh, get every reaction right for your character, because that's going to replicate in every prompt in the future. So if the character never gets scared, you probably don't want to include a scared, you know, facial reaction. Um, I wouldn't mix things like chibi and 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 uh, you know, refined anime or whatever. Like I, I wouldn't mix those two because you're going to get some really weird results sometimes, uh, unless that's your intent. Um, so now that we have these kind of poses here, I want to run a color correction on these because I want to make sure that the, that at the very least it's as close as possible. And I'm also going to remove that tail really quick. And so by getting it as close, including the color hues and stuff, we're going to get a lot less divergence between our results. Okay. Um, so now I will just select all three of these, make sure they're on the same layer so that everything I affect is, oops, is, uh, you know, usable, uh, or at least, uh, sorry, is consistent. So I'll come into here, hit replace color, grab the purple, and just start hue shifting that until it matches the purple that's above. And I know this from experience, y'all, like I, I've, I've done this long enough to where I don't really have to look at the hue values to know if I'm close on the purple, but there you could literally just hover over any color in Photoshop and it'll actually tell you in the info box what the three values are for that particular color you're hovered over. 
So you just got to make those colors match a little more. So we have that here. It's not a perfect representation, mostly because like we actually see his hands now and his hands are not tiger color. Like they're not, they're not fuzzy or, or colored or whatever. So um, we can just come into here and uh, replace that color and make it purple, just just to get us moving a lot faster. I don't really want to worry about having to in-paint um, the hands and stuff right now. So I want to bring the fuzziness down to just being the hands, and we're going to start to select, uh, try to bring purple back in, something like that, and we'll increase the fuzziness a little bit, and kind of bring that maybe closer to here. Yeah. Nah. Eh. Go for it. let's we probably have to combine these. That's no big deal. So drop that fuzziness there a bit. Yeah, let's go for something like that. Because we're probably gonna have to do this twice. So I hit OK on there. And then I'm you know, there's other ways to do this too, right? The lumetri color and all the stuff to do it right. But at least I can get it close enough to where mid is gonna understand what I want to do with this. So let's increase the fuzziness here. There we go. And yeah, that should be good. So now when I look at all these, boom, he has, pur he has purple hands. That's what we want. Um, cool. So now that we have a character that has hands in it, we could just add these to URLs together. We don't really need all of these turnarounds, by the way. We can get away with a couple of them. And so we're going to start throwing in a couple of poses just to see if we can get, so I can show you guys what this looks like here. Okay, so we have all of our URLs from our sheet here. Here's all the URLs. What we wanna do is we wanna isolate to probably just the first three, right? And make a new, this so we'll basically say this is his running poses. Okay, so I'll write on here that this is tiger, uh, just turn around or whatever, just anything like default. And then on the next one here, I'm gonna write tiger running. The, well, what I wanna do now is grab three URLs. It'll be these three here. So we're gonna grab this here, one character, pose, drag that into Discord like that, and do the same thing on the others. Okay, and because our image references include a character running and their hands are now visible, we might be able to make an even better turnaround sheet just with these running poses. So this, there's multiple utilities that could come out of doing this method of where we're just kind of over time building up these images, right? But what I'm going to do now is grab these three URLs, add it to the end of the running poses, and I'm particularly trying to keep the lowest resolution images at the end of the of this list, just so that we get the cleanest results. That's at least in my experience, that's what works well here. So now that we have all the tiger running, let's give him an action that makes sense to be running. Okay. So um, let's just say uh, we'll, co we'll come up here and grab the most successful prompt that we used. I'm going to prompt this multiple poses, action poses, blah 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 blah. But instead of using all these poses sheets and whatnot, we are just going to describe what this character is going to do. So let's just say, um, if he has got to be running, right? Let's just do like chasing a, a chasing. Let's just say chasing a criminal down the street, or chases chasing a scrim. Uh, ah, I can't talk today. Uh, chasing a criminal down an alley. Purple tiger to suit. We'll see if this is enough, and we'll kind of take it from there. But look at this. Look at it. Cool, 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 cool. All right, we're getting really close right off the bat here because we we already got a good run here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to build this image out after we do the injection. Okay. So we got we got the tiger man running here with already an appropriate leopard print on the front. That looks that looks amazing. Uh, I'm gonna switch this over here so you guys can see. Um, and uh, yeah, and you got some fun ones here from uh, chasing, chasing a tobacco truck down the street. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, but what I want to show here is the injections, okay? 
So I'm going to grab all of our URLs of the tiger running because we're injecting into a matching or similar pose, right? We can now hit variation strong, paste all of our URLs in there and just submit it. And then also at variation subtle, which is going to give us some wonkier results. But we, uh, this is essentially where we switch off from subtle to strong because with subtle, we're going to keep all of our posing and our, or sorry, our, our composition. But because we have a more animated or drawn style character, it may do some weird stuff. So we're going to do also Niji just to kind of encourage that again and see what we get out of that. So we're not only doing an injection, we're also applying Niji to the results here. And we're going to see what we get. So if, say, the results of this were like super off model, like we just really didn't like the results, then I can do a variation strong or variation subtle. And instead of adding Niji, I can just put hyphen hyphen IW, which means image weight, and then use two. That's the maximum amount. And what that's going to do is it's going to really force it to go back to your uh, to your turnarounds. You'll probably get a white background. You'll probably get some similar poses to your character sheets. But image weights is how you fine tune this stuff. So um, yeah, let's take a look at some of the results here. So this is, um, you know, this is an example of switching the Niji, and we already have some pretty usable stuff from this, uh, just in terms of the posing. But you could see it, it, it kind of, it, it kind of made that confidence sort of run again. It, it's definitely doing what I want it to do for that. But let's look at the. Uh, this is uh, this is switching the Niji and doing variation subtle. Um, it's it's. It's really funny how how actually close we are on some of this stuff, but how wonky the overall quality is. And that's the negative of, go, of using subtle at this stage. I, I really like to do strong for this because it gives me a result that is very usable, uh, but might be a lot closer to being on model to what we got here. And you notice, yeah, we have them running here. Uh, again, the bow tie is the least consistent part of all this. So we are going to double back and we are going to put an emphasis on the bow tie now on the original running prompt because that's what we're missing here. So uh, I'm going to write slash imagine. And we're going to do, um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. So we'll do chasing out the red, da, 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 then red bow tie, purple suit, purple tiger costume. All right. And we'll, we'll see if that gets us at least a little bit closer. Um, I'm actually gonna go run downstairs and grab another drink. I I, I have a horse throat today, um, so I'm gonna run back down there and I'll be back in a couple minutes. What I want you guys to do is think of any questions or anything that you might have just while I'm gone, and um, and that way I can kind of run through. Especially if you have any particular. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for uh, more weird, more weirdness. We need we need all the weirdness that we can get. Thank you. <laughs> Is that Crispin Glover? <laughs> showing you that image weight does work with Niji. Oh, wait, it does? It's a bit more at times, yeah. It does? What? Yeah. Scroll when up. Did, when, when did you start using <laughs> image weights in Niji? When, when did this happen? Uh, with Niji 5. With Niji 5, okay, all right. Maybe maybe <laughs> that's where that legacy information is stuck in my head then. Um, yeah, okay, all right. So that's that's neat. I didn't know that. Um. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll mess around with that here in a minute. Please ask your questions. I'm 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 gonna be right back. Yeah. I ask some just questions. used that image link because it was still on my clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Crispin Glover when he was scrolling by it <laughs> from Back Matt's to the Future. Cool. Things are happening in Crispin Glover's life. <laughs> you have a question. Oh yeah. Please please let me know. Uh, when you create a comic, do you do a pre-storyboard of the idea slash story, or do you do more freeform as you go? Mm -hmm. um, so I do get I do get the question about like where the ideas start and all that stuff. But when it comes to like mocking stuff up, I've been using Midjourney just to mock things up in terms of like the, the individual images or panels, right? But uh, I I I I'll sometimes draw like by hand. Just to just to get myself like you know into in, into like an idea, but here here's the thing about that. Uh, I try. I I I I've I've gotten somewhat addicted to Mid Journey. Um, in a way, in a way that I think a lot of the power users can relate, right? 
Um, but the, the, the reason why is because it's just so freaking easy to build storyboards. It's so, it's so easy to be able to just, you know, work on another idea very fast and, and, and start mocking stuff up. So when I'm doing a comic, right, I'm oftentimes getting inspired by the imagery in order to know how to finish it, or at least what style I'm going to kind of aim for with it. But my goal is to like maintain continuity because then, then people can go, Oh, okay. This has artistic intent. There is a, 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 you know, a, a, a concisive world that people are enjoying out of this media. Um, but yeah, I, 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 and I'll bring up one of my comics that I did last week as well to kind of show some of that. But um, yeah, I, I, I would say that whenever I'm mocking stuff up, like doing the initial, like, you know, boards and all that kind of stuff, I am generating them, but I'm at the same time, very, very much, if I hit a wall on something, then I'm drawing it. I'm just going to draw it and then send that to mid journey or leave it as is and just let people let 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 people not know what is generated and what isn't because frankly people just say all my stuff's generated nowadays nowadays anyway so i'm just like okay i'm just going to i'm just going to make it look right and just deal with the fact that people can't see my human authorship anymore um yeah. you know so then lexi had a question yeah is he- hey Regarding aspect ratio, are you using one by one mainly for turnaround and word only actions prompts to mix into instead of three two or something bigger because you get less diluted poses slash whatever and it's better to pan instead of get more options question mark sure sure um and it's good to see you princess i after this lux i really i really do uh appreciate some of the stuff you've been sending me obviously it's it's she she's got so she's got a real cool project in the works guys i can't wait to show you guys that later um but uh the the main thing uh the 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 main thing to pull out of that though is about aspect ratio is it will heavily affect the end product of what you make because you know the feature set is always going to be somewhat in the middle and it'll it'll kind of encourage taller results uh if you do a tall aspect ratio um and that is all very useful especially if you get stuck right if you get stuck in a place and you're like oh man the aspect ratio is just if i could you know if i just change it i might get some results that are closer to what i want I use aspect ratio more for that nowadays because the zoom and pan functions exist before the zoom and pan functions. Oh yeah. No, I would have told you, you always had to use a aspect ratio of two, three, just to replicate a vertical piece of paper. Um, things like that are l- less important now because of the new buttons. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm like at half those numbers, by the way, ancient. Uh, I, I I have very rapidly increased since uh, starting to become a teacher here, but it's definitely uh, I'm nowhere near 150. That's for sure. Um, 150k. I'll, I'm gonna pull up one of I'm gonna pull up my comic here just so that you guys can check this out. Um, so um, this comic was actually made by one of you all. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, two of you. Uh, one of them's on stage with me here. Um, but, uh, so let me, let me just show this really quick. Um, okay. So, uh, I may, I, 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 it's really kind of an awkward place for me to say, did, did I make this or not? Because like, yes, I put, I put the whole thing together in terms of the joke and, and all that stuff, but it was actually Bob's blaze that sent me the layout and the, uh, and the variations that he made um to make this comic okay um the the joke the joke being here is that if you've ever owned a cat you know those churro things are freaking addictive like crazy addictive so that's the ending joke on this is that they see the obelisk from 2001 and it's like nope it's actually a churro uh like that 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 was my entire bit there but like understand that almost all of the visual information i'm telling the audience was not included in what was given to me so let me show you guys that so if I go in the comment section here, I actually have the mock-up here. Um, the the mock-up itself is quite literally, like I, I ended up not using one, like I ended up merging these two panels together. I ended up deleting this cat, I think almost entirely. Or what, like basically I'm just going through this, but I was inspired by Bob's Blaze's choices. He gave me a big script, honestly. I, I, I was like, 
I was like, okay, look, people are going to be only reading this stuff like while they're pooping or whatever. So like, this needs to be a joke that can be like said in a pinch. <laughs> it needs, it literally needs to be said in a pinch. So like, I reduced the joke down super hard um, to something that I felt like would be, you know, quickly consumable. And you get, and now I'll just zoom out here so you guys can compare left to right here. I want you to notice the cat's faces first. You'll notice that whoever has the speech bubble is actually talking in this prompt here. Um, that is entirely done by highlighting, selecting over the area there and just writing the word meow. Um, literally, the cats just started talking after I wrote the word meow on their mouths. Um, and that, that's been my favorite use of in-painting so far, honestly, is just getting, getting a realistic talking cat mouth, like, that we would do for, like, you know, the dogs, like, okay, the original way you would do this in entertainment was literally to put peanut butter inside of the mouth of the animal, right, to get them to start talking and stuff like that, or quote-unquote talking, and it looked awful back then, right, and then early CG and early, uh, you know, VFX tools came in, in the 90s that started making lip flapping a thing um with 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 this at least with like in painting and pictures this is amazing like this is literally a plug and play option for making characters talk especially if they're animals because you could just make the animal sound and or re replace it with the in painting so uh i did add a couple hand-drawn elements like down here there's a little opening of the mouth that i just drew in there um and then also in terms of hand-drawn um, and it's also really weird for me to say hand drawn because this is like partially vectored, but all their all their heads, like all of the um, uh, the 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 uh, <laughs> fish bowls that their heads are in um, are all vector art that I applied over it. So I, I basically drew a circle and then I drew another circle and said that second circle is a cutaway or like a, a, it cuts out that 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 circle to make it like just an uh, like a outline like this and then i doubled it and then brought it over with a blending mode to make this kind of reflecting light that comes from it the entire reason i did this because you could logically say like okay maybe there's atmosphere on this weird alien planet right the only reason i did all this work to put the bubbles on their heads was because i wanted a reflection of the of the churro inside of the head that is literally the entire reason I did that. And I did that because it would be a subtle joke to the audience that they may not ever really even see. But it's a subtle joke that tells the audience to have expectation, to have a little bit of like, oh, my, oh, oh, are we going to make a 2001 reference? Or, oh, are we going to, are they going to find like some crazy thing out there in space? And it's just a churro. That, that, that is, that is literally like the, the, the foundation for this joke is just, it's it, almost all comedy actually is just subverting expectations. Right. So that's my subversion is just, it's just making you think that it's a 2001 reference and then boom quick. This is the churro comic. I, 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 I definitely am so happy that I did this with kinky and blazed uh, Bob's blazed because this was such a fun Bob's. project. Yeah, well, okay. You up it. It would not exist if you didn't up it. Like understand kinky. <laughs> you, you, you had more effect on this than you think when it comes to this stuff, because you chose it. You chose the picture, which was this this image right here. That, I didn't that... choose the churro life, Victor. The the churro life chose me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I'll, I'll just say that um, this comic here is a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun making it because um, I didn't make it entirely. You know, like it's not like an idea where I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work or whatever. I knew pretty fast that this was gonna work because Bob Blade made me laugh. Um, he sent this to me. You know, and um, the thing is about this this comic here is that I got inspired by his layout, right? So Kinky got inspired by the image and going, "Ooh, that's fun," and then Bob's Blaze got inspired by Kinky's decision to upres it and went, "I see, I see some sort of story here." Um, and there's also a little bit of an Easter egg. It's pretty small, but they do have a space cadet uh symbol it's it's something that i prompted separately and threw in there it's a little sleeping cat like as if he was in stasis and he is and he's like yeah so i was like eh, deep space travel cats so that's fun i i was mostly wanting to point this out because this is an example of doing a collab 
with AI users, right? We're, we're all kind of getting inspired by different things. And you guys have given me the honor of finishing it as in like, like the, uh, like I'm the one that actually determines what the story is, all that stuff. You guys are more than welcome to make your own version of these. You could even use Bob's blaze, like a initial layout and try to make your own kind of expansion on this. But this is the joke for me. And it got like 2000 upvotes or so on Reddit. It was, it was recognized, but it was also like not any of my biggest stuff or nothing like that. And the main reason why is because this is like, this isn't obviously generated, but it is, there's no, like the, 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 the artistic decisions that are in here are entirely me going, there's a lot of pink here. So I want it to be a reflecting light of churro. Right. So there's like a big shadow, like all, all that, all these elements are drawn in there because I was inspired by how pink everything was. Um, you know, the, the, if, you know, you were asking earlier about how I got inspired for my jokes and stuff, and that's it. That's got to be it there. So it's it's mostly just visual information. Um, OK, cool. You know, the it, it, in terms of you guys using Victor or using Sage or any of my other characters that are on Discord, please do. I want to see them. I want to see what you guys make. And I will tell you whether or not they're on model, as in like whether or not it matches the character as I know Victor to be. But I'm always so surprised by what you guys do. Um, there's there's the there's some really fun results. Um, I'll actually pull this up really quick here. Well, I was trying so, to get the white cat forever. They oh, wouldn't yeah. go in. And um, I kept putting, you know, cute white cat, sad white cat, or sad, you know what I mean? Just trying to get any cat at this point. And uh, finally, I just like spoke Spanish, and I was like, Gato Blanco. And it gave me that. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Sometimes out of just sheer frustration where you just throw a bunch of things at the wall and see what works. It just, it does, you know, spaghetti. Yep. And spaghetti. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up my own discord here and I just want to show, uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, it definitely shows you just how, how distracted I am, like how, how hard it is to get my attention when I'm like really focused and doing these things, because I didn't see any of your old private messages telling me that I was gone. I was like, whoops. Okay. Um, but what I'm going to do, yes, it's under Victor gnarly here. Okay. So inside of here is actually a bunch of stuff that you guys made, uh, during one of the prompt battles. And you can see there's a lot of Victor, a lot of fun versions of Victor that I was not expecting at all, um, including like, you know, famous paintings and uh, and 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 just a wonderful wild outfits uh, that like I would have never have done on my own because I have a certain way to do things. But it's just because I want to have consistency within my own comics. You know what I mean? Like we can do whatever, really. But seeing this, like just seeing Victor as like, these famous paintings is so funny to me. I love it. I love, I love how silly some of these are. I really like, and Lux knows I really like this one. This one was one of my favorites that came back. Um, so there you go. Uh, if you go to my discord, you can find all these images and you can riff off them. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can see some of my original art pieces as well that I've done. This was a reference to Billy's balloon, uh, from Don Hertzfeld. So I was, I was really trying to evoke, that I even wrote AI on the on the comic that I originally posted this on. So there's a lot of like little things that I'm submitting for Victor in here, but I'm really just trying to show you guys like I allow for a very large range in the results, and I want to see all of them because there might be a use for them that we're not expecting. And when we do comic prompts, which I'm you know we'll double back and do comics uh, uh, on another stream. But you can make entire, this is an entirely generated image. I didn't do a single bit of in painting for this entire prompt that came up with multiple panels and like this demon guy that comes up and interacts with Victor. And I was thinking it was just some like, you know, some, some, some jackass statement from Victor. That's just like, oh, you know, you're, you think you're hard, you know, that kind of thing. But also like getting into like cartoon minimalism and you can see what my character does if you inject it into cartoon minimalism and really what what that does. Um, we have a couple of video examples of where I am using Pika Labs to create videos of my prompts. Um, all of that's in here. Like you're more than welcome to deep dive into here and start like really make it, you know, really, really at least at least understanding the intent behind some of these like this one here is actually pretty educational. 
I am showing that if you inject a character in a pan right next to the one. So like I've made one with the dog robot dog guy. If I only panned once over and it merged a bunch of dog features into Victor because I'm way too close to him and it's marrying parts of one image to another, I would need a gap between these two so that they're no longer merging features. Um, that could be as simple as a blank space in between them or just continuing the original prompt so that the character is no longer in the frame or on that side of the frame. So yeah, there you go. Um, including like my little boss or house comics and all that stuff. Yeah, it's all here. You guys are welcome to check it out. The one comic that I actually haven't done at all is this like super moody one where I got like 16 panels on every one of my results. And there's just a lot of really cool like storytelling potential out of this one particularly. So if you guys got like a particularly mood or set moody or saddy, a sad story that you want to tell when you want to tell it with Victor, you're welcome to. And uh, it, this this is one that I, I eventually might get to myself. But I show some of the behind the scenes for my comics, like how I made the um, the uh, when we were shooting Clippy here. Uh, that's that was done with this background here. Um, and I, I eventually want to do an Evangelion kind of joke where there's like half of a head, but I was thinking like it's Garfield or something like Garfield's head is halfway stuck in the ground, like Evangelion. Um, just, just stupid jokes like that. Uh, you'll see occasionally on my discord too. So that's fun. Um, but uh, outside of that, um, I'm just going to open us back up here. Um, stable diffusion. The majority ones are fine. The third, the third is stable diffusion and the only one that's safe to post here. Okay. Yes. Yes. I imagine that there's going to be plenty of not safe for work stuff coming out of stable diffusion. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was a good prompt battle. I was so glad I got, okay. I should say that when you guys pinged me and I like came in and my music was blasting and I had, <laughs> had all of my settings still on for streaming. I, I, I felt so bad when that happened. I'm gushing over all these images and these guys are in a live chat competition. Like I was just like, oh no, I'm I'm a I'm a big jackass here today. So I'm gonna Hello. I'm just gonna enjoy enjoy these on my own time. But I jumped into the Earl's prompt battles and my I was listening to like the loudest, cringiest, earliest early two thousands new metal. Uh just because they I don't know. Sometimes I like to listen to really bad music and like that was one of them. And I was like, oh no. Uh this is this is embarrassing. But all right. Um, we're gonna get back into the lesson plan here. I don't know I anyone know... who drinks while they're on Discord. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody drinks while they're on Discord. Uh -uh. Not, not one person. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. It may be used on purpose to soft variations expressions. Yes, yes. You can definitely use the blending with intention. I, I, I'm building a sail out of like out of fabric, right? And the thing about it is the sail is made out of like a driftwood stick. And when I panned left, I said I wanted a beach, right? Uh, and when I said the beach, it sh it filled, uh, sorry, I said a beach with pitchforks. And it filled the beach with the sticks that I made the sailboat out of. And I loved it. I loved the result so much that I ended up keeping it for the uh, for the comic. So that's what I've been messing with is just using pans to kind of influence the neighboring image just enough, just enough to give me like where it's almost all image interrogation. Like I'm relying on the image data to be able to say, hey, yeah, I want that full of pitchfork like sticks or whatever. But I, I was originally going to have literal pitchforks in the sand. But nope, now it's a uh, now it's just a bunch of my own sticks, like as if like I was throwing spears for ever until I finally hit something like that. <laughs> That's the kind of look I was going for. And expression sheets have been covered in other places. But basically, we need in order to make an expression sheet of this character, we need to we need to exaggerate the results to evoke each emotion that we want. But we can also do that with a bit of, a bit of a cheaty way. Okay, so um, I'm gonna come into our prompts here. Let's uh, go into here, VC create. You don't have a question, but you do have a comment. No, please, please. Um, Victor's note about characters reminds me of some experiments with very region. It recognizes that there are two characters, but if you select just the character you need changed, the prompt, both characters are the same one and it can force it. I've done two princesses and a doom guy having tea, a moose and a cow dancing, tricky, a lot of rerolls, but they can turn out great. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in painting is how you can maintain two separate characters inside of your prompts for sure. Um, it, 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 you know, you want to make sure you delete all the URLs from the character that is not referenced, right? Or at least use a single image rather than the entire a bunch of images like I was doing before. Like it, the AC nailed it in terms of like just 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 grab an image of a guy in a red bow tie and just throw it in there and see if it works. You know, you do get the Pee chance. Herman. That, yeah, exactly. Right. Just grab some Pee Wee Hermans and you'll be good. Um, but yeah, like it's it's this is really where a lot of the misconceptions come from, like the traditional art crowd about this, where they go like, oh, so you're just stealing images from the Internet and putting them into Midjourney. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm the images that come out of it don't look anything like the images that I'm referencing. I'm literally just giving it direction. I'm telling it what I want to see. Um, it's it's if I was photo bashing, I would just use Photoshop. You know what I mean? Like like I, I'm trying to create original content, and there's still a very strong belief that that you cannot make original characters with Midjourney. It's just going to randomize everything, and that just comes from not not doing like not having the experiences that we have when it comes to making this stuff and understanding that like the variations actually do allow you to maintain that continuity, especially if you're able to hand draw the characters. Right. So um, what I want to show though, is that we have the multiple poses, you know, running, jumping tiger costume prompt here. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to try to make an expression sheet just off of the prompts here. All right, so what we want to do is we want to try to make an expression seat. So we're going to say instead of multiple poses, action poses, blah, 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 we're going to set multiple expressions of, of you know, close up and then get rid of running and jumping. And I'm even going to get rid of purple suit because it'll just give us a suit. and We don't really want it to focus on the suit at all. Um, and so multiple expressions, close up, purple tiger costume and uh i'm just gonna see what results we get out of that all right off the bat but i can already tell you that we can probably get some really interesting results just by um just by saying oh wow okay yeah so we're, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna need the right put the word sheet in there uh because we definitely got just an, a close-up of just a tiger so let's let's get rid of the word close-up and we'll say um multiple poses multiple expressions just to see if we can evoke um you know uh, closer closer ups of the face there and i'm gonna get rid of this ping because it's probably you guys telling me hey we can't hear you uh it's hey. getting late oh okay. it's getting late here and i'm having an early appointment tomorrow so i'll have to log out for now uh thank you so much for holding these sessions celeste or right, uh, thank you so much i know i really appreciate you guys watching and stuff um and uh, I'll be sure to check out some of the more of the voice text here, uh, here in a minute. But I wanted to mostly show that you can see that we're we're getting we're getting some issues here. We're we're definitely running into um, weird land, uh, and it's part of the reason why I wanted like I'm not very good with doing the expression sheets on furries because we're 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 quickly we're quickly uh, getting into a territory that is going to um, be uncomfortable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just fo focus on the faces here. So um, purple tiger face, and we're gonna try to get it to be where there's multiple faces in the single frame. Okay, so multiple expressions, multiple faces. Like, like well, let's just really try to force this one. Style expressive, and then we'll write character sheet at the beginning there. Some of this might be redundant, but we'll see what happens here. And NG5 to see if we can force a drawn style that kind of evokes what you saw in Sage's sheet here. Um, and we'll we'll go from there. The, the the character sheet prompt tends to add sketchiness. It tends to add like drawn elements that you may not want, but we immediately see that we have our multiple faces back. We have our, you know, uh. <laughs> Uh, it's not a tiger. Keep in mind, we need to make it a tiger. But we we start to see that if the expressive really forces a humanoid back, which is why uh, we're we're gonna try to do this now without Niji and see if we get similar results. But that expression sheet there, some of these are like perfect for what you want to do. Like like the bottom left one has a lot of potential. If you inject a purple haired female character into those, you're gonna get 
basically an entire range for a character, at least pessimistic and angry. Um, we can always change that to a different one later, but yeah. Okay. This is more of what I wanted. Okay. So you can see we're kind of getting all the same screaming face, right? Uh, out of these. So I probably want to reroll these until we get a variety of expressions. So let's say, um, multi character sheet, multiple expressions, multiple faces, and then I'm going to go happy, sad, angry, upset. I'm just going to write emotions for the tiger and see if we can get at least that to replicate and and go from there this is so cool i'm looking through the uh you see create and there's a lot of cool results that people are coming up with that's for sure yeah but you could see here that we've finally got an expression sheet of a you know, furry-like character, and that's actually the fourth one here. All the other ones are the exact same expression, like, nine to 12 times over, okay? We don't want that. We want a range of expressions. We want multiple faces that are showing a diversity of reactions, okay? And, you know, we get a lot more hand-drawn, sure. But now, I'm going to go back to our URLs here, and, um, sorry, our, our character sheet here, and instead of using the, all the URLs that we had before, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just marquee the faces. This is why it's important that if you really want to control all this stuff, you just have your character sheet open and you don't rely entirely on the URLs that you have. You can save your character in mid-journey using slash prefer, and we'll get into that later. Um, but for now, this is going to get us a lot closer to the results. Basically, we're going to marquee to match the kind of comp like the shape so that we're seeing here on the image result so i'm just going to start posting different uh marqueed elements of the character here so let's do this one and then this one and i think that's probably enough but here's here's the fun part we can even include the original as well, right? Just just to get us a little bit more, um, let's bring it back a little bit, right? I didn't draw any of the pupils in the tiger or nothing like that. So we might use this one first in order to really force this look. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it, get all of our image links now. So you can see I have four of them here. I'm gonna start with this one and then open them just in an order that, like, it, it, the order doesn't really matter that much. It just, the first one's the most important. I have my text document here. I'm just going to do tiger close up and then just start posting these links here. This is probably a better way to do this anyway, just for the sake of showing you guys what, it, what this looks like. Now I got all four of these URLs. Copy that over. And then, again, I'm going to do a variation strong, paste the links Niji 5 at the end there, so we basically convert it to Niji. And because, uh, like I was saying earlier, we want to do style expressive just to see what we get. Before I keep writing these, I'm going to check to make sure the links work. Yep, they're working. Okay. So, um, and then I will do um, same thing with the subtles just because I want to see what the results are. And then, then we'll do the image weights as well. Image weight two. If if it's way too sterile, like it's way too repetitive in terms of the results that you're getting, like you're just not happy with it, just drop the image weight and you'll oftentimes get um, closer to what, at least what you originally drew. Uh, or sorry, that, that closer to maybe something that's interesting. Um, because the higher your image weight is, the more likely the result is going to look like your images that, you're link that, you're, that you have in there. So, all righty. Let's see what we got. Um, <laughs> look at this. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So with style expressive, with high image weight and a cl and all the image, keep in mind, all these image references are all close ups, right? It, it merged them all together, but kept the glowing eyes because that was the first image on our list here. So if we open up the first image, boom, glowing eyes, high image weight made everything come back to this, right? Um, and I see that uh, Boozlegast did one with style cute, 
and it suddenly suddenly we're like playing like Roblox or something. Not Roblox, yeah, but what no. it, yeah, it's 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 like a 3D video game at this point. Um, but the the most important one for this is style. I was variation subtle because variation subtle is going to keep some of these reactions, some of these poses, and um and and let us be able to keep them as part of the character sheet. Um, part of what makes furries hard is determining what non anatomically correct thing you need to do in order to, it, it, you know, personify the tiger's face as a human being. Um, it doesn't really know what to do with that normally, but I do think this first one under style expressive is giving us the best results where we have a diversity of smiling, angry, uh, sad, like that. I think this one's going to work well. And then if we look, and that was actually a variation strong, by the way. That was a style expressive Niji variation strong that actually gave us, I think, the best results out of this. Um, but if I double back to the expressive, um, but doing variation subtle, you could see that it's a lot of it is not really that usable, but there might be one or two of them that speak perfectly to how you see the character talking. Okay. Um, so that's that's the thing. Um and it, same same thing here, uh, you know, we we have a couple of really good like spooked reactions, like especially on this first one here. I'll I'll pull it up, um, and then we'll we'll look at these here. So I really like some of these reactions here because it looks like uh straight up from like you know uh it, this is a video game. Um, it's it there's a lot of fun little like expressive elements to these that I like. I like the fact that it has a little ooh mouth here for that. So this might be useful, um, but I'm going to use this guy. So we're going to copy that over, and we, we're going to go back to our character sheet here. And I'm just going to make it a little taller. doesn't matter where it is on the image. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the ones we like that are on model and put them on the sheet. So you can see here, we, we can't use the ones where there's hair on the top because that just makes no sense um, for the tiger to have this humanoid hair. I mean, what? Yeah, it's 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 it makes no sense for what we're going for here. So I will just. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it does look like a lion politician now. We want to get rid of those just so that we can, um, you know, kind of emphasize that. No, no, no. I want I want these. But there's some hair on this one. And some hair on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this a smart object. I'm going to hit edit here. And then um, I'm going to see if just with image interrogation, because we deleted the other ones with hair, if we can get away with just highlighting the area in Photoshop beta. In painting would probably fix this too. And you don't really have to change anything either. You just in paint the hair. But I'm going to try to get rid of this hair and these because I like the expressions that are on there. I want a sad face. I want a happy face. I want a grin. I want everything like that. Um, the I would say that the top left and the middle are probably redundant. But if you notice, look at that. It got rid of the hair and just gave it a head. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I think, I think this one works. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to save. And you notice that some of the pupils are missing and some of them are there. That's all because the first image had pupils and the rest of the images had no pupils, right? So um, at least with Victor's character sheet, I try, to, I try to add diversity to at least some of them so that not only am I getting different reactions and stuff, but I'm even getting subtle changes in hair and things. Because if, you're, if you whip your hair left and right, your hair moves, you know? So I don't really want to have this kind of like, cheap anime aesthetic of where everything is just cutouts, right? So uh, yeah, uh, it, that, that's my logic for that. So we're, we're going to go ahead and now save this sheet. And what I'm going to do is I am going to just put this somewhere on the sheet that makes it easily grabbable, you know? So let's do like here. And now I'm just going to select each one of these. Copy, paste. And we'll fix little errors and stuff here in a minute too. But I mostly just want to select this so that there's no erroneous information, no extras.
No little tiddly bits at the end of your marquee. That's the important thing. Um, so now that we have all these and we can separate them out a little bit, I'm going to delete what's redundant. And you know, some of this stuff's not going to be perfect. Some of this stuff will require you to draw it in order to make it right. Um, to bring it back to a perfect, a, a, at least a near perfect result. Um, half the reason why my tutorial character animation looks as good as it does is because I spent so much time on the character sheet. Even if it doesn't end up translating to every detail ending up in my prompts, it translates to a consistency that you just don't see in AI imagery. Um, you just don't. It's uh, It all comes from actually having knowledge of how Photoshop works, <laughs> you know, like uh, super important to have that. So I'm just going to grab these two. Expand that out. Same thing on this last one. And there you go. Yeah, I, I'm I, the more and more that I do this, this particular furry for Booble Gas, the, 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 the more likely I'm probably not going to do the other furry because like it, the, the expression sheet is where a lot of these fall apart because it takes it takes a lot to um, to uh, to really get a character that you like really that you think really expresses for you. You 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 want to make sure that this expression sheet is diverse and interesting. And it's really hard to get mid journey without having a traditional art skill set to make this diversity or at least be able to see the diversity, right? You want to imagine that the cat is going through like every stage of what you can imagine would be happening um, in life, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I'll say that the, the, the number one redundant face, we have to remove one redundant face out of this, which is the, uh, the smiling kind of like kind of face. We don't really have to. It's a subtle, subtly different, uh, you know, position on there. But I want to go ahead and delete this one, and that's entire. The only reason I'm making that decision is because the the forehead. The forehead might add some element of muckiness to it, uh, since there is. I can actually zoom in to show you. It's less consistent than the rest of the foreheads. It has this crease in the middle that kind of all flows in a bit oddly. While the other ones are all just kind of like almost like eyebrows, like that's just kind of adding a little bit there. So uh, I'm just going to delete this one. Oops. And if we don't like our decision, you can always just, you know, uh, try to uh, save them for later and then try it again when you, you know, have the time and whatnot. But you can see here we now have five expressions which should be enough. We have the main turnaround. We have alternative turnarounds, including the backs of the heads and all that stuff. That'll be useful for later. Um, this is this is the core, you know, character sheet now for this. If we needed more extreme poses, then we would just use those extreme poses. Like we would get extreme poses for the character and then do the whole process again. The entire reason why you want to take your time on the character sheet is not just for consistency, but also because it's like it's going to give you time to really get to know the character and for you to know, OK, this is what this this is what uh, this is what really defines this character is these certain panels, these certain keyframes. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select two of these full bodies here. So I'm going to say this one. And this is this is kind of like my generic character prompt, right? Paste that. Go to the second one here and paste that. I'm not going to worry about the other poses for now because I'm just kind of building what I, I'm calling the default character model. It for especially if you're doing comics and stuff that relies very heavily on facial reactions, you you're going to want to not have nearly as many full body images as you want to have facial images. So I'm just going to select each one of these faces. I'm not going to worry about the pupils just because I, I want to get through this with you guys. My two dogs are extremely excited that I'm repeating the same barky words to them uh, right now. <laughs> um, I, I, that's, that is something that I tend to notice with other people. It's like you do realize that when you talk to your dog like outside, the reason why they, one of the reasons that they keep barking is because they think you're barking. Like when you're outside, like saying, hey, buddy, how you doing, buddy? You know, to your neighbor. And they start mm -hmm. barking. It's like that's because they think you're barking at the neighbor. 
You know what I mean? Like, like it, it, that happens and you're to me their all leader. the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're just copying you. Um, so I'm taking away the collar on this because I noticed that that collar is probably going to make everything really weird and wonky. Um, so I have, uh, let's see here. I'm going to replace that back here. Okay, cool. We now have five expressions at the end of two character turnarounds. Okay, so you can see them here in order. Two character turnarounds and five expressions. Oops, I got to merge these back down before I send that last one over. Boom, there we go. Now we have that. I'm going to send this over to, to Discord so I can get my links. Uh, we are going to open all these again. And unlike our previous turnarounds that we were doing, where we were just trying to make a full body like action shot or full body, like basically the character is always going to be full body. These are going to be what you actually end up using to make like the, the final shots of a film or, or a comic or anything like that, because the expressions is, is what you want to control. It's what you want to be able to say, yes, this character has to be sad at this moment. So I'll only use the sad facial reaction for this one because he has to be sad. When I don't know what the character's reaction would be, like off the bat, top of my head or whatever, then I'll use all of them and then see what I get. And sometimes the results are better or more interesting than I was expecting. So uh, let's quickly build a blend of just this so that I have the URLs and can, and can confirm that they work. So we'll go back here. Start off with the first turnaround. Second turnaround. First face. Second face. Third face. And fourth face. Now, I will say that when AC sent me his one of his characters that he made, um, he included an entirely separate line, like line order of URLs, just for close-ups, like just for close-ups of faces. That would probably make a lot of sense too, uh, especially if you're doing in painting where you need to change the faces and stuff. Um, that's that that is definitely where you only use these kind of like expression sheets uh, as opposed to the full bodies. That's a, that's another way you can handle this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and send this just so I can confirm that all those links work, and it it does because it's rendering. So um, now I can take that. Um, really any prompt, any prompt that's going to feature this tiger-like character and and essentially inject him back in. We, you know, we're still getting issues with the bow tie, right? So I'm probably going to add the word bow tie in there and see what we get. But um, let's do, let's just give him a scenario. So it's like, um, you know, purple tiger uh, man, or it's this purple tiger uh, purple suit at the office. I'm just going to say something re really generic. I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, a lot of a lot of success from getting anthropomorphic will come from, you know, the word anthropomorphic. But like sometimes when you say like Tiger Man, you'll get a Tiger Man. I got. Yeah. I was yeah. trying so hard to get like an athletic shark man. And I didn't I never thought to use the word shark man. Shark man. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's all the superheroes. You know what I mean? It's all the villains and stuff that have the word man at the end of it. And it's referring, okay, yeah, there's going to be some anatomical weirdness to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it totally makes sense. So I'm just going to make him at the office. Like, he's the boss that you really don't want to meet, you know, that you don't want to have a meeting with. And I think anyone that sits like this, that sits like 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 this, is a, a definitely a boss that you don't want. You know what I mean? Like, like that 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 doesn't seem fun. So I'm, I'm going to inject into this and we are just going to allow for a whole range of emotions on this one and do need you five. But what we're also going to do just because, I, you know, I'm just showing you injections with reactions. So if you want to eliminate one of the reactions, you can better control the faces that kind of come up with this. But we can actually make this into a web comic, too. Right. Just 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 to kind of show you guys what 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 sort of wackiness we can get into instead of in terms of automated. But look at look at this. Um look look at the immediate how how well it works in terms of making a usable like animated thing. 
uh, or like you know, dr- like the gl- there's glowing eyes, there's dark, there's purple hands. It's 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 the freaking tiger. Like it's crazy that yeah, all this stuff works. For like as an well. evil monologue. Exactly, and and that was all possible because we said we allow a range of emotions in the responses. Okay, uh, at least in my opinion, and like we're starting off with basically saying, "Here's my puppet. He's a douchebag." Okay. So when you inject into here, it's going to, you know, we get really close. We get a lot of that douchebag comes back uh, in this. So it's like you, you, a lot of those human human reactions that we have to these images, it may not be the same result, but man, is it close. Uh, it's it's kind of amazing. The uh, So we're, we're going to say like purple suit. Yeah. Purple suit and uh, uh, tiger man. And uh, we'll just see what it does um, with with that as is. Now, if you do Niji or anything like that at this stage, it's probably not going to give you a comic. And the reason, and I like, I, I don't really have a reason for that, but it's it it it's like you're much better, like much more closer to results if you start using aspect ratios when it comes to layouts in particular. Um, so, yeah, we got we got our. Now, now we're gonna kind of go for the Joe Camel here. I think. I think there's a little bit of a Joe Camel moment that we can go for with this one. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say the top up, one of the, the top left here, okay. Uh, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna inject our character into this one because we're very close in terms of like the composition and the character stuff here. I'm very curious what we get just by doing a variation strong, but we're also gonna do a subtle. And um, we might convert it to to, to animate, or at least a, a, a animate data set on this one. Okay, that's funny. We we did get we lost the panels, but we definitely got like a tiger like character in a purple suit. You know what I mean? And it's it still retained a lot of the purple of the character, but not not very on model in my opinion. Um. And this one was the uh, okay, Brandon. Funny webcomic, purple tiger, purple uh, purple suit, drinking at the dance club. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the third one here, and we'll inject into that just to see what we get. Um, but you can notice here that with the variation subtle. Okay, and I'll I'll hop over here so we can kind of deep dive into this one here. You can see that you know instead of a glowing nose, we got a lighter nose, which we can take advantage of. We also it also made the cat in the or the person in the in the in the uh, portrait um, much more detailed and much more like a cat. But this is already bringing us a lot closer to the original character model, particularly the second one here. Uh, the second or well, this is more like a house cat, but the the second one here I think is really where we're going to see the yeah the better result of that. So um, let's actually double back for a second. And then we can see here that this one was just Boozle, uh, uh, Boozlegast just running a blend. Um, I believe this is just a blend. Let's check on. Yes, yes, it's just a blend. So he's including the URLs on the initial prompt. Uh, that's that's going to bring the images to look like a, a basically an asset, like a part of a turnaround or whatever. Like you could use this stuff, but you need to make a you need to like apply a background and do everything else that makes it you know, more usable. So we can see here that with funny webcom purple suit tiger man, Southern Gothic flabbergasted uh, by Boozlegast, um, we lost the tiger, but that might be okay because if I now uh, take one of his upper as is here, um, this one here, this, the, the, the real issue here is the character is a black silhouette and not a purple silhouette. And that does matter. Uh, Cause I'll show you what happens if we just inject into there and see what it looks like. Um, but I'm actually going to pick the first one here because there's the, it has ears, and that, that silhouette of the ears could help us out a little bit. It'll thin out his face a bit. But here we go. All right. Here's here's a, a funny webcomic, Purple Tiger, Purple Suit, Drinking at the Bar at a Dance Club, Comic Panels, Anthropomorphic Tiger. So really emphasizing on the anthropomorphic nature of it, right? Uh, this, this works really well. I, I think you guys nailed it with this one here. So um, let's go ahead and pick one of these, uh, probably the first and the third one. And we can try to inject into um, into these comic panels, because this is really where, you know, if you guys really want to automate as much as your storytelling as possible, 
this is where you can kind of go ham with it. Because once we have the characters on model for this, we can start zooming out and making the rest of the comic. So I'm going to inject all the URLs into that one first, just to see what we get. And the thing about strong and funny web comics is that we're going to lose the panels. That'll, that'll, that'll definitely happen. So I'm going to do it as a, as a subtle and also here as a subtle. Subtle is really when, when you're happy with the composition, you want to use subtle until it doesn't work anymore and it doesn't look good. That's, that's when you can go, okay, I need to change this up. But you can see that uh, a lot of these, they, they, they lose the panels right away. But then with subtle, we actually keep the panels. So I'm going to open this one up and waiting on that other one to show up here. Yeah, and I'll open this one up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So you could see with the subtle um, with the with the subtle variation, we got not only multiple poses in every panel. Like if we if we zoom in on this here, there's one where he's drinking and his hands not on the cup. There's one where he's reaching into his pants, I guess. Uh, there's another one where he's smelling his hand. There's like there's so many <laughs> other like yeah you know what I, you know what I'm saying like there's this is this already is just like he's the worst boss and he's like the guy who does all the gross stuff. Like I like like, like there's a almost like a face of disappointment for this one. Like I'll, I'll let I'll let you all have fun with the actual storytelling here. But I am to be honest, the one that I'm uh, like I love all of these. But this one where he's holding the ball kind of reminds me if he had a he had a coworker that was a dog. He just keeps the like he tortures the dog coworker by throwing a ball. Like that would be the that would be hilarious to me. Just to see a character that just like he's just like, hey Odie, hey, hey, you know, look at this. And he's like, no, I don't want to do it again. Don't make me do this. And it's just like catch. And, and you know, yeah, it's just it's just a way to torture his coworker. Um, yeah, yeah, that that sounds funny to me. Um, and also just like the drinking without holding the cup just sounds like something that somebody would do if they're like, look at me guys, look at me at the bar, I can do this. And it's like. Everyone else could do that too, but it's just embarrassing to look at you do it. You know what I mean? Like it's just <laughs> yeah. There's there's all sorts of like little condescending things that we can kind of infer from this. But this is the first result, okay? So if we're already laughing at the first result, that means we can actually go back and keep redoing this subtle variation until we get a result that finishes every panel and we can just construct it normally after that. OK, so like um, I, I'll just pop back over here real quick and we'll do that again. We'll paste it into here. And remember, guys, this is working be not just because we have a turnaround. OK, like the turnaround is great. It'll let you get really far and you probably will have to manually change a few things or rely a lot on prompts in order to make the story make sense. But the thing about it is you want to get to the point where you have the character sheet with all the expressions that kind of cover your character because then you can now have a like basically a universal list of URLs that that works for each potential like situation your character is in okay so um now that we have multiple versions of this comic that we like that we think is workable all that kind of stuff i could bring it into photoshop and finish it yes but i want to be able to save this character I want to be able to always have this character available to me, even if I jump to a different server. Like, say your buddy invites you to play a video game, and they have Mid Journey on their Discord, and you want your character to pop up as as, as you you know uh, maybe maybe you maybe maybe you just killed them in the game, and you want your character making fun of them. You know what I mean? You could save your characters inside of Mid Journey, and so the way that this works is you write slash prefer, and there's going to be a an option here on the top this option set what i want you to do is i want you to write the name of the character so i'm gonna call him boogie uh and it, it, it just 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 because of google guest like i think boogie works works well for me boogie um and i'm gonna hit the plus one more it doesn't look like a button but it does show you options if you click on it click on value now inside of the value, I want you to paste all those URLs that worked. As long as you confirm that they work, you're good here. Now I'm going to save this. 
Now, whenever I write slash imagine hyphen hyphen boogie, all those URLs are going to populate wherever I wrote boogie. Um, and so this is incredibly powerful because you can super quickly insert characters into your prompts. So like, for example, I'm just going to zoom really far back. Don't care where. Yeah, let's do this one here. There we go. That's what I want. I just want to, I just want the a separate character, a different character in there. I'm just going to up res this one. I, it's it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine that it sends you to like the very top of that page. All right, okay, yeah. so we have, yeah, it's, it does it all the time. But all right, so we have this here. Now let's just pan over to the left, delete everything. All right, boogie. And what's gonna happen is it's only gonna refer to your image links, right? So, and I'm loving some of these comics, guys. Like, like go nuts, please go nuts, um, and send me whatever you make. But you can notice here because we have a lot of close-ups, right, in in our expression sheet, it's it 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 doesn't let us actually get um you know like a, a character that's just standing there, okay. I mostly wanted to emphasize that the character sheets with the expressions, especially, is really really good for when there's a bunch of different panels or a bunch of different instances of your character in there. You could really get some variety out of it. But if you have something like this where we go, okay. My intention now is to get someone standing, you know, standing in front of her. Okay. So then I want to come back into my, my character sheet here that I have everything saved from earlier. Okay. And now I have my tiger running, my tiger close up, and my tiger turnaround. The tiger turnaround is actually what I want to use because I want to, I want the character standing up. I want, I want to see as much of that body as possible without describing it as a, um, a full body shot. And the reason why is I don't want it to look like a character sheet. I don't want it to look like a, a I want it to look like a, a like the character is actually standing there. OK, so let's try this out again. But this time, instead of using the URLs from Boogie, we're going to use some new URLs, which is the original turnarounds here. And then I'm going to write, um, you know, uh, let's just let's just start. Let, let's just go off of that and see what it does just by submitting that. Um, and now that, you know, if I confirm that it starts to behave the way I'm expecting it to, which it should, you know, we're using some full body stuff here. You can see, look at that. We, we, we have a character that's more properly standing. And, and the thing is, is that you can really control this in terms of like where the character sort of sits in the frame. What I wanted to show you guys is the fact that if we, if we now take those same three URLs that we had, or sorry, the same three poses that we had before, but what we're going to do is we're going to create versions of them with a lot more negative space that will closer account to the image that we're injecting into. So right now we are injecting into the left side of this image, right? And it has a pretty big aspect ratio. So we want to take that aspect ratio into account. So let's do this. Inside of Photoshop, I am going to now marquee a much larger area. So first we collapse all this. And then I'm going to marquee something like this. OK. And that'll be the first image. And then I'm going to marquee another image here. And this is essentially how you direct the character in the frame. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's called blocking uh, in, in film. And blocking is essentially where the character is in relation to the other character and, and the camera all at the same time really great blocking that you saw like in the in like fi movies in the from the like the 30s 40s and 50s they all relied on the fact that the dolly the guy who was like pushing the camera and stuff has to has to keep up with the actors in a way that is like very basically like it's 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 all the blocking like all the blocking of those movies they almost all are exactly the same uh, because they're all following a formula that was written by somebody. I don't even know who. But you notice here, now that I have three images, they all have a lot of negative space around them. Okay? So I'm going to take these three URLs, and now we're going to inject it into that pan here. So we'll do pan left. And then I'm going to grab, get rid of all this stuff. And I'm just going to post those three URLs. Again, we're not providing any direction, which is going to... Um, 
uh, beyond the blocking, right? So that 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 could help us too if we start adding words here. But because we've baked so many of those words already into the images that we're using, it knows that. It knows that we have a purple suited tiger now. It knows it, it's not like it intentionally knows that. It doesn't have a brain in that regard. Um, but uh, but yeah, so the, the key thing here is we're replicating the negative space that we want to have around the character. Um, and so look at this. Look at this. You see what it's doing. Like in real time, you're seeing it reconstruct the scene. Um, because we added so much negative space, it's able to go, oh, okay, you want to preserve, you don't want me to zoom in as close as possible. You want me to do something else. And I I'm just going to up res the first and third one, because they're both examples of why the orientation doesn't matter too much, because they're going to, the AI is going to make all sorts of wacky decisions for orientation. It's, it's all about intent and it doesn't have any intent. All the intent's coming from you. And so, um... But look at that. We have the character now in a realistic pose, standing and looking in the same direction as the other character. So I'll, I'll open this up in this one here. This is, I'm always kind of amazed when Mid Journey does this right. Um, so more often than not, uh, you tend to have some sort of eye line issue between the two characters. And it helps to have an eye for it to look at in order to determine, oh, okay, that's where I need to go. But because we're jumping to like, you know, non Niji, you know, like we're going from Niji to non Niji, we're getting some silliness when it comes to eye line and all that other stuff. Um, experiment heavily, 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 heavily at this point. Uh, this is where you want to go nuts and have a lot of fun with it because we can now, now that we know that this works, okay, we can now come back into here and go back to that prompt, hit pan left. And because we don't have to bake any more information into it, I can just start having fun with it, including your styles and Niji and all the other stuff that was added to this. But let's just run one like this, and then we'll run one with style cute, because why not? Um, I had, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely liking everything you guys are uh, messing with at the comics as well. I, I think this is particularly funny, just to have anything that involves, like, you know, anything in business suits, honestly, just kind of makes me laugh. And we at least got one character smoking. But I'm I'm more excited about this result here where we just where we just decided to do Niji 5 and Styles Expressive, right? Um and it lets us be able to say, okay, all right. Um we we have these two characters now more more talking to each other in a different, you know, they're yes, they're kind of jumping styles a little bit, but at least at least it's a lot more drawn so if i now zoom into his face here that i mean that's already pretty close it's not perfect but it, it definitely is close and we got a purple suit we got a plenty of negative space around him all that stuff we have a bit of a hard line here but what i can do now right is let's make a quick slash prefer for boogie's face okay so um i'm gonna come into our character sheet here And I'm just going to highlight all the faces again. And we're going to make a quick sheet for this. I bet you there's like, if, if a, like a Discord engineer saw this video, he's like, oh God, the number of URLs you're just making right now is enormous. <laughs> you know, like, and you're expecting everyone to do the idea. I can't wait for a, like a proper anchors update. It's going to be really neat uh, to see you guys get into. Um, I, I want, I want, I want I, I want to be ambulance. able to automate yeah I want to be able to automate some of this stuff for sure um but yeah so if we come into here we have all of our faces right um we can actually add something at the end here to kind of reinforce what we want the base character to always look like and this is where saving that original image comes in handy okay so as long as the rest of the character model is pretty good and we we have some like green flaps and things here but what i'm actually going to do is i'm also going to marquee the the character model here and i i don't like the hands on it honestly because it just kind of looks blurry and murky it, i want to avoid errors so i'm going to just copy this and then paste that as well so now we have a total of six URLs 
with this one is going to be at the end, which is very important that it's at the end. So it has the least influence out of all of our pictures. Okay. So I'll come into here and start by adding slash prefer. Option set. I'm going to do boogie. And then face. And then I'm going to add all those URLs into the value here, making sure that there's a space in between them. And again, you know, after you make these, you want to make sure that you render at least a blend or something like that, just to be able to make sure all your URLs still work. Um, you saw earlier that it's really easy to just kind of flip up and or whatever and uh, and and have um, and, and not include a space in between the URLs or something like that. So we have all of his facial reactions, and now we're going to get this last image here. And because it's at the end here, to me, at least at least how it works for me, it lets me be able to have some backup if I need some more visual information. Like, for example, I left the cigarette in there, right? So maybe if I prompt a cigarette, that cigarette kind of sits on the mouth in the same way every time. Not every time, but most of the time. We might be able to get results like that by including that image at the end of our URLs. Okay. So now that I have this saved here, I'm going to hit make square on the, um, what is it, on, on like this image here. The reason I have to hit make square or custom zoom is because I need to get the region in painting back. So we're just going to let that load for a second and then we'll get into injected in painting. And we are coming close to the end of the stream, guys. We have about 15 minutes left or so. Um, just letting you guys know. Out of the four that we got, I, I'm, I'm more looking at her, honestly, because it's just this big dress, right? But to look at only him, I think, because we have no information that tells us that this is book, like panning down. It has, we're, it only is majority seeing some of the shapes and things as we as it zooms out. Or make square. We can now in paint boogie back into a pose or a face that we like. Okay. So I'm going to do the fourth one here. And what I what I can do is essentially hit very region. I'm gonna select his entire head just to kind of match our image references as close as possible. And then I'm going to delete all the information that's in here and write boogie face. And I put underscores under mine. I, I don't know if that's required that you need an underscore to represent a space, but that's what I do anyway. And the, you know, because we're going to Niji, I could, I could also, and it saves it every time you had very region. So you always get the text there, but I can also write Niji five style expressive. To hopefully match the style set or the data sets a little closer and quicker. Um, oh, style. Uh, NG5 is only compatible with the following values. Expressive. Oh, I spelled expressive wrong. There we go. All right. So <laughs> instantly he's headless. Uh, sometimes these results require larger, more generous areas for us to inject into. <laughs> and this is the negative of going too big when it comes to your region select is that you're going to get all sorts of funny um ov overly largely sized heads and other things like that um and we're definitely losing it like this character is falling apart very fast i'll be honest but here we go uh suddenly we do have one that works and i'll, I'll open this one up here the bottom right one works look at that purple cat, all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to now up res that one. And we can actually see it's actually a cat on the first one too, just looking away from the subject. Now I'm going to do a, a region in paint and I'm going to do what, what, what was the original, original idea here. And we are going to marquee the arm and the hand and just the front of the mouth here. And I'm going to say smoking and smoking cigarette, purple tiger, man. Um, this is one of those subjects where like, you know, I obviously don't want to be advertising cigarette smoking. It's not good for you. You shouldn't do it. Um, I will say that it's really funny though, that, um, 
you know, like one of the things that about my character design for Victor, like my, part of part of what I was planning this character was that all the characters smoke paintbrushes or pencils. They don't smoke drawing utensils. And that was kind of like my own tongue in cheek way of like, you know, uh, kind of lampooning the sanctity of art. Right. And one of the things about it is that like Victor will be smoking in front of like a, a nuclear smokestack and that nuclear smokestack will have like Disney's logo on it or something like that. You know what I mean? That's a hundred percent of Victor, a Victor kind of um, composition that, you know, you're going for, but I, I, I would a hundred percent like if, if the reason why it's so jarring for people to see a cartoon character smoking is because it's illegal in the United States. Um, you are not allowed to have a uh, a daytime television cartoon character smoking. Um, that's been true since the uh, late '80s, early '90s, or something. Um, if you all don't remember, the movie Mrs. Doubtfire actually opens with this scene. It opens with um, uh, Robin Williams, while well, Robin Williams' character getting fired because he refuses to do a, an acting scene with a character that's smoking. Um, that, that, that's actually referring to that law change. Um, so that's fun. And the bad um, guys in, um, Waterworld being smokers. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. They're like, they, there's a certain like villainous connotation with smokers too. So like, I'm leaning into that pretty hard with a lot of the imagery, but I do like this. Like, look at that. We got, we got like, you know, a hand coming up to it that could be lighting the cigarette. Um, we have, yeah, it's, it's just it's very cool to see this kind of stuff fleshing out for us, like as we're doing it. Right. So I can now let's, let's actually up res this third one. I think that's going to be the most interesting. You do have and a then I'll, questions. yes, yes. And then I'll take some final questions here. Okay. Um, perfect. 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 I mostly just wanted to emphasize though, that you can really go hard on this uh, in painting stuff to really like hone in exactly your vision. Right. So um, I can now come into here and, um, you know, I don't really have to change much of the writing. I just need to come in, select this area here, and then put a much larger area there, something like that. And then I'll say cigar like like a plume of smoke, and see if that's enough to change the position of the cigarette to ev you know to evoke that I want it coming out of the mouth because I'm giving it more context of what else it could be you know could be done here. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'll let that load in the background while I take some questions here. Uh, I would love to dig through everything you guys made here, but it's a lot. So, um, yeah, let's do some questions. So you basically just got um, one question and one comment from Brandon MC. And it says, um, would you also adjust the color slash contrast of your source image to help it into the scene? Um. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so the, the thing is, is that color really dictates your characters right it really lets the audience know okay this is a this is a you know it's particularly a cartoon character but if you're doing a live action more often than not you are going to need to do a good amount of uh correction on what is called the curves the curves of your image um it's 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 the part of the histogram okay so if we, if we kind of zoom in here and I say on this image, image adjustment curves. Unlike levels, which a level on its own is just a these two bars down here, um, a curve will let you adjust the angle, basically the angle of attack between the darks and lights of your image. So what that means is that if I come down to here and show you guys, I can now expose like overexpose underexpose but you're not actually over and underexposing with this you're just changing how dramatic those hues and I should probably move my head you're just changing how dramatic those hues change I mean, sorry the, those those that luminance changes okay and you can you can uh, change this per color so we can now go to red and change just the red you know so if you're at a nightclub and it's like boop, you know, that kind of thing. And you really want to have like a bunch of like flary lights and stuff. You could just do this and, and get different <laughs> results from the character every time. Um, but uh, the thing is, is that you can also go in and have um, 
uh, let's see here. You can also like change exposure and do a lot of stuff to closer match the images that you're you're injecting into, and the results are simply going to be better. And it's because there's there's just more matching, matchy matchy. Everything must be matchy matchy as much as possible, anyway. Matchy matchy. Matchy matchy. And then I guess um, Brandon MC says with uh, I think he's referring to in painting on Mid Journey uh, that you can trick the small area by selecting outside the image. Yes, yes, and I, I I talked about that in a previous stream too. How you can you can if there's a a, a wasted area of your image, right? Uh, then you can uh, then you can get away with just in painting in that wasted area and uh, and and then doing your small detail touch. And then Rick says, "Matchy matchy" is a better word than coherent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Matchy matchy. Uh, like whenever whenever um. What is it? Whenever like my socks and my underwear match, I make my life my wife go by just going matchy matchy, and then like you know like just do a little shift. It's uh it's it, it, there there's there's uh there's some fun to be to be had by using more I would say less technical terminology when it comes to you guys because whenever I'm talking to like professionals and stuff like that and they're trying to like get started with this or doing something like in entertainment. They they get so frustrated when I say shit like that. Honestly, uh, it's it it just it comes down to the fact that I'm like I'm trying to be personable and fun, but then they're like, okay, but what is actually happening here? What what does matchy matchy mean? Like you know, like that that kind of thing. So I like your all's takeaway better. Um, yeah. I like your I like your 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 plump your plump kid that you uh, generated here. Kinky. It's Tony. <laughs> he's, oh, he's, Tony. He's, he's gluttony from the seven. Oh. Seven. Nice, nice. I like it. It's that's fun. That is a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, yeah, and and you know, I do want to say to everybody here, um, you know, who's watching and stuff, thank you so much for join, you know, joining and watching everything that we got going on here. I do have some socials you can follow at victorgnarly.com on the top right corner. I got a Twitch stream, and I try to stream on Twitch every Sunday. I did last Sunday, and we did Pika Lab animation videos, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but I'll probably play some Pokemon as well. So uh, that video was really cool. Oh, cool. I'm glad. And, and all that stuff's on the discord too. So if you want to check out all of our, uh, you know, animated, um, things, uh, just, just to kind of show you guys an example of that here. Um, we have, uh, where is it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. yep. 1930s expressionism. And this is your all's thread here where there was like animation that we were making of like people moving and talking. But I wanted to show you guys exactly what it would take to use this stuff in editing. So we were editing some footage together. And I'll see if I can open this one quickly. Yeah. So this is an example of one of the shots we got. It was just kind of a pan over to the side. And they're like, maybe that's kind of useless on its own. But I was like, no, 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 no. What we can do with it is we can actually cut two frames together at the same time. So let me see if I can full screen this really quick. Uh, no. Darn. I'll just do it this way. So, um, yeah. So what we did is we panned to the left in Pika Labs with mid-journey outputs and then slowed it down. And I didn't do a great job at lining these two shots up. But what we wanted to show was, like, a sense of, like, it's the same character, but he's backing away from whatever doorway he was looking at and he's going to the next one and you're the one that that's hiding in the other doorway or something like that there is like some sort of evoking of of you know i don't want to be found by this person so we did all that stuff all this animation and stuff was all done with pika labs so you guys can check that out i would do that on my twitch stream don't worry about going to him uh <laughs> last year when we were testing a big change to the back end of the bot uh we were told to go ham so I generated thousands of images of ham. <laughs> I bet David was very happy about that. <laughs> like it was so much that Discord rate limited me for like three hours after. <laughs> good, good. You deserved it. Um, yeah, no, that's funny though. I, I'm I'm really digging into the idea of doing more video, you know. Uh, but I I want to emphasize here that. I, you know, you guys are great. I, I have a lot of fun. Not really. I have so much more fun doing this stuff with you guys simply because of the results that we get just by collaborating. 
Um, understand, like, uh, the, the machine mind itself is super fascinating. It's super cool. But I am, I am so, I'm one, I'm one person. My ideas ran out months ago. You know what I mean? Like, but, but you guys, when you send me stuff and you especially like contribute for these streams, it's so huge for me. Uh, it's just so much fun to, to do. So thank you guys so much for joining and watching. Uh, is there, is there any other thing, uh, that we, we want to close on kinky or. I think this was a perfect review of the first is that we did this honestly that, that's good it's the should... furry edition the furry edition it's uh <laughs> yes it came out really nicely though i mean you did a great job on on boozle guests taiga i'm sorry that we only did one character out of the box today but honestly the furries is such a it, it, there's a reason why i waited like nine streams to do furries because i know that the animal mouths really screw up its understanding of talking yeah, you know, right. like we have so many different mounts that we can go through on a flat character face. But as soon as we start adding weird whiskers and weird plumpy cheeks and other things like that, you 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 lose a lot of that. Um, and Boozle Guest says he was thinking of adding some IRL shots to that Pika Lab stuff that they that you guys did on Sunday. Uh -huh. uh, I was not there for that. I did not know that there was a thing, but I would have been there. Uh, <laughs> wait, nope. I was I was at prompt battles. I don't leave prompt battles on Sunday. And then um, Rick says, "Nice use of Max Cooper's song in Beyond the Valley." Purpose. Yes, yes. So that 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 video is actually a like a a, a couple of random advice like tips of advice from my dad before he died. Right. So like, there's there's all sorts of like like. The flaws of man and men and all that stuff, like the world's broken because the flaws of man and men is definitely something that my dad had told me at some point in like in completely like unimportant context. I think he was watching Fox News, you know what I mean? Like and he just randomly said that and my kid brain permanently locked that memory in. So a lot of the stuff in that short film is um, is me exploring these these kind of memories, but also like using uh, poetry to generate the prompts more than anything else. And and in my tutorial, it actually kind of goes heavily into why I used, you know, the phrases that I did and everything like that. So, but from a purely emotional level of using Max Cooper's song, that's the song of like I would describe my 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 head was in when my dad passed away. It just felt very like everything was robotic. Everything had to have happened the way that it did. And I didn't have any choice in it. I was just, I felt, I felt like I was non-existent for, for weeks. Um, and so I use that song very deliberately. Um, and I use the imagery very deliberately. So I really appreciate you checking that out. That's really awesome. Um, it was the first thing I ever animated with AI. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. I hear a yeah. kitty behind Kinky. Yeah, yeah, and this one's <laughs> right up on top of me. I'm not locking her out of the room like you, you, you villain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what I do. Uh, but I'm you know, I want I wanted to say thank you guys so much for joining. And and if there's anything else, just feel free to reach me out, reach out to me on Discord. Um, and uh, and you know, we'll we'll say hey and stuff. But my Discord channels, the or sorry, my Discord um group is the best way to reach out to me though. Private messages are kind of a gamble. <laughs> Oh well, thank thank you so much for coming, Brandon. I really do appreciate the recurring faces here because now now I feel like I have like I got friends, uh, and that's that's great. Uh, it's you have like friends. Yeah, well, I I I recently not too long ago moved to a small town. Uh, I got out of the big cities, and I was like, okay, I'm moving to a small town. It's a college town. There's plenty of young people around. It's fine. I'm I'm, I'm really enjoying it. But I really don't get these long, breathy sessions of talking to folks. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you learned a ton, man. That's awesome. Um, and, and, and it's great to see you, uh, Princess Lex. Uh, Lex, I really, I really appreciate uh, all y'all coming. Um, it, it is, it is certainly true though that uh, there is only so many people I can count them on my hand who would be interested in hearing me talk for this long about any <laughs> one subject. So. Uh, it's uh it's it's really great to have you guys keep coming back. It really does it, it at least it tells me that there's something that's working about what we're doing here. So that's awesome. 
Uh, I stay late at fri- work Friday, and I so I can keep listening and watching. Well, oh man, that you really need to enjoy your Friday, though, man. I know you're. Uh, th- thank you so, so much for saying that. Me yammering for four hours is is an uh, entertainment, but I, <laughs> I, re- I really, I, I really want to emphasize it's Friday. So you guys enjoy it. Enjoy your your end of the week, and um, and I'll I'll be on Twitch on Sunday. So you guys have a good one.